Committee to order from um, Monday evening. May, excuse me. God, I'm all, I'm all messed up this evening, aren't I? But in any case, uh, it's the budget hearings for, um, to begin this evening. And uh, we're a few minutes out, but we're going to start with the public hearing in just a couple of minutes. But I just, I just want to um, indicate to all of you, I did receive a call from a city councilor from Ward 6, uh, Michelle Dubois, and she's on her way and should be here uh, uh, very uh, shortly um, as well. I'm sure others are going to be uh, joining us. Um, as we indicated, we would have a public hearing before we go into the um, uh, deliberation of the budget for uh, this coming uh, fiscal year, which would be FY 2016. And when we do have the budget, budget um, open uh, meeting for the, for the budget, remember the, uh, the amount of money that we're talking about that's been appropriated by the mayor is 384173386 And we all have our copies of the budget before us and have had ample time to look over uh, the budget. And that's uh, what we're going to be um, staying with when we have people okay. come before us. So I would ask you to please stay on the topic of the city budget for the next fiscal year um, when you're making uh, some, some comments. So with all of that uh, being said, I'm going to um, again hit the hammer and we're going to begin the uh, public part of the um, um, budget uh, process. I'll ask people to come up if they wish to have a comment to, to, to come up to the podium, state your name and address to the, um, to the clerk. There is no discussion. It's for us to listen. That's how a public hearing is held. No deliberation. It is for us to listen to you, and it is for us to take under advisement. So with that being said, I'm going to open the public part of the meeting at this point. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Sullivan. I, I first of all, I just want to thank those that, that have come here tonight. As you know, when I stood up there last year as the president of the council, uh, we didn't have any members. So there's quite a few members. I want to thank all the men and women of the union that are here as well. But this is a good showing for Brockton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Councillor. If anyone wishes to come up to the podium first and state your name and address to the clerk and have two to three minutes to address the, uh, the council. My name is Dick Sakaro. My address is 55 Oneida Avenue, Brockton, Mass. And uh, before I start off, it's always a pleasure to be in front of this esteemed body of government. I appreciate you allowing me to take the opportunity to address you. And I want to start on a positive note. I thank each and every one of you for serving us. It's not an easy job today, so thank you very much. Now for my prepared comments. It is imperative, counselors, that we all work together to make our city a better, safer, a more affordable place to live. Every year the story is the same, counselors. You increase our taxes, increase salaries and bonuses, and threaten us with police and fire layoffs. Even you have to admit, counselors, is getting kind of old. Now the latest is giving pink slips to our school teachers. As far as we, BLT, are concerned, we believe these are nothing but more than idle threats and are scare tactics. And once that you vote for tax increase, the pink slips will be ripped up. I already see in the paper, you're not going to be laying off teachers possibly, but teachers' aides. Meanwhile, our CFO continues to stash away millions of dollars in cash reserves and enterprise accounts, maintaining that we are broke, that you must go up on the full 2.5% tax levy each year. How is it possible that we have no money, counselors, when we have a double-A bond credit rating? We are far from being broke. Every year it is something else. We need the money to fund our pensions, replenish our depleted snow removal budget, settle our union contracts, and more. Isn't it about time, counselors, that you give us a break on our hard-earned tax dollars and hold the line on yet another tax increase? It seems that the entire country, including our own state, is laying workers off in the private and public sectors. However, not in Brockton, where it is business as usual. The latest being that you may vote yourselves a 50% salary increase at our expense once again. Our residential and commercial taxes have doubled since 2006. This year, we have 200 more city employees making more than $100,000 a year than we had last year, bringing the total to 450 employees making over 100,000. We had six employees that made more than 200,000 last year. And let us not forget that the city pays 75% of these employees' health insurance benefits as well. 
A city has become a political patronage haven loaded with nepotism and employees who require no minimum job qualification to be city department heads. Enough is enough, councilors. How about for once lowering our taxes by managing the city budget and private corporations manage their budgets? If this city was a private company, you would have been long out of business, councilors. How many more of our middle class of businesses do you want to drive out of our city? How many more Section 8s, drug rehabs, and homeless shelters do you want in our city? We're currently housing 9.4% of the state's 1.4% homeless population, and that doesn't even take into account the 350 people living in Tent City. How about going after Stone Hill College and collect the sewer rates they owe us? How about abolishing the enterprise accounts and placing them with revolving accounts and free up millions of dollars in revenues every year and apply it to our much needed tax relief? How about rezoning our downtown to bring in more development projects and bring in alternative energy companies to turn more brown fields into bright fields like our solar energy investment on the south side of the city? Councilors, all these suggestions will result in millions of dollars every year will allow us to hire more than the much needed 70 or more police officers to combat crime and make our city a much safer place to live. You wouldn't have to jack up our taxes every year as well. I am sure that you are all aware that we now have the dubious distinction of being the second most violent crime infested city in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And our chances of being a violent crime victim are one out of every 23 people. Stop and please think take a minute and think about our councils as to what this actually translates into and means to us. This means that it has come down that this could occur in every one of our own neighborhoods. It's the time to stop putting this unfair, unjust tax burden on the backs of our city residents. We already pay more than our fair share and we can no longer afford to live in the city. We have some of the highest residential and commercial tax rates in the entire state at the same time, have one of the poorest tax bases in the state. Now, on top of the 2.5% proposed tax increase, you'll be voting on June 22nd, the recommendation of certain members of our Water Commission, to increase our water rates by 35% over the next four years. This is inexcusable and also unwarranted. We must put an end to the voodoo economics that exist in the city that makes no sense at all, counselors. The trickle-down effect will be devastating to our homeowners, renters, businesses in the city, and force even more people to move out. If the city cannot run the departments officially, then maybe it is time to start privatizing some of them. Counselors, talk is cheap and action speaks. Do the right thing and lower our taxes. We have been footing the bill long enough. Give us a break already. Thank you for listening to me tonight. And councilors, please do the right thing for all of us and vote no on both the proposed tax and water increase. And one more thing, councilors, bring back AMR. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishes to speak, please come forward and state your name and address to the, to the clerk. Good evening. My name is Ron Maddow. I live at 29 Greer Street in Brockton. Uh, I, I've come here tonight to ask you not to raise taxes, knowing full well that our pleas are going to fall on deaf ears. I'm a little confused because every time I ask somebody what the budget for this year is, I get a different answer. I've heard 353, 355, 365, 385. Does anybody know what the budget is? Can anybody give me a figure? Now, I know that the revenues coming in this year to the city of Brockton are $391 million. If the budget's 385, that means we got at least a $6 million surplus. Where does that money go? We have a surplus every year. I, I, I'm moving out of the city because I can't take it anymore. I can't afford any more taxes. When I bought my house in 94, I was paying $1,400. If you increase taxes again, 
I'm going to go up to probably 3,700. If we had more police, do we have more fire? Do we have a full police department, a full fire department? No. The infrastructure is crumbling. Where is all that money going? Think about it. What, what are we doing with it? We're not adding police. We're not adding fire. We're not fixing the infrastructure. What are we doing with all that money that I've been pumping into the city for the last 20 years? It keeps going up and up and up, yet the services don't go up. The infrastructure doesn't get fixed. We don't hire more police. I'm just saying, no more taxes. We've had it. We've had enough. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Muppet, state your name and address to the clerk. Thank you. Thomas Siddell, 103 Braymore Road. Good evening. Good evening, counselors. How about having a non-resident city employee tax? We are losing millions of dollars every year by allowing city employees to relocate after fulfilling their seven-year residency requirement. How about doing something about the desalination plant and finally terminate their contract that would save us millions of dollars each year? Our own city solicitor stated that they are not in compliance with their contract with the city. Our CFO also stated to you with a great deal of uncertainty, if I may add, that the desalination plant was in compliance with their contract, providing the city with full water capacity for 30 days, when in fact it was only 50% capacity over the 30-day period. You can't even get their CFO to show up there before you and the one time that he did, he was ill-prepared to answer any questions. How much more evidence do you want that there is something very fishy here, other than the contaminated fish eggs in the water supply at the plant. Now the mayor wants to buy the power plant, uh, buy the plant for $88 million. That is four times more the Korean firm paid for it. And to use the water from which I have been told will cost us 18 times more than the water that we were supplied, uh, supplied from our primary source being Silver Lake. It just doesn't make any sense to us, councillors, why our city officials do not terminate this contract and terminate it now. How about once, how about for once give the single family occupied homeowner a tax credit as the communities do? How about offering a business tax incentive to locate here instead of pricing them out of existence? Don't go up in the taxes. Thank you. Thank you. This, anyone else here that wishes to be heard, please come up and give your name and address to the clerk. Uh, my name is Robert Ford. I live at 61 Barney Street in Brockton, Mass. Good evening. Uh, once again, our beloved CFO wants to go up the full two. 0.5% on, on our taxes. As usual, the City Council will have the round robin event known as the Factor Game. How about this time coming back with a factor of 0.0? .0? And actually, the only levies that we want to see are the ones protecting the French Quarter in New Orleans. Uh, this usually goes on for about an hour or more. I am asking this Council to stand up for the residents. There are many ways to meet this budget, which has come, become very ambiguous. The amounts vary up to $20 million, depending on who you talk to at City Hall. First, let's get out of all those bad deals made over the past several years. The Aquarii debacle is at the top of the list. Recently, the CFO stood before you and told you Aquarium met the criteria of sustained delivery of water for a 30-day period. <coughs> According to the report from the town of Dayton, this failed entity was only able to meet the goal one day the other 29, they didn't even make the 50% mark. Walk away from this and save the city $6.5 million every year. This will go a long way to help improve the infrastructure. Stop funding the Rocks Stadium. Use the motel tax money to meet the budget. Dissolve the enterprise account and put it into the general funds. One can't help notice when the tax hearing comes around, the usual threat surface. This being the threat of laying off police, fire and teaching personnel. This scare tax usually works. There was never any mention of layoffs in the administrative end or middle management. 
This is where the high five and six figure income surface. In most cases, these positions are political patronage positions, which makes them sacred and untouchable. Uh, folks, this practice will continue unless the voting public wakes up and puts a new face on, on Brockton city government. To see a turnout of less than 20% year after year will ensure that nothing will ever change in the city. No doubt we will see the parade of department heads almost in tears with their tales of woe. The only thing missing will be the violins playing the mournful dirge in the background. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, how are you? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kate Archard. I live at 6 Woodard Ave in Brockton. I wanted to talk tonight about the AV and the public uh, hearing process here for the ability of our residents to watch these proceedings and to understand what is going on with this budget cycle. Um, I don't know if you've resolved the issue with the televised meetings, but it's been pretty crappy. Many times I've tuned in to try to watch, and there have been uh, disruptions or it hasn't been televised. Many of our citizens don't have cable. They have a dish, so how are they watching proceedings? Um, also, I was looking for information on the budget to be put online. It was not online, therefore I had no way to analyze it and look at it before I came. I was disappointed about that. So public democracy only works when there's information that's accessible and available to the public. I would ask the city clerk and the city council to work on making these meetings more accessible, televised better for all people and that information is put up in a timely manner. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Michael Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, point of information, I spoke to Mr. Lindy tonight, uh, who is, of course, the chair of the uh, BCA, and he, he assured me that the issue has finally been resolved. Uh, Comcast uh, detected the issue at the Baker School, and that the, uh, the conduit and the wiring has been repaired, and there should be no issues. We should be fine this evening. Should be is what we're told. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak before the Council please come forward and state your name and address to the clerk? Dennis Rissi, 7 Kenwood Street, Brockton, Mass. Good evening. How are you? Taxpayer and voter. Gentlemen, for the last five out of six years you've raised the taxes. People in this city can't handle it. Now, the casino may, may not come. We did win the vote. I pushed for it. But what's going to happen? That's two years away. And if we raise taxes again over the next two years, we're in trouble. A lot of people are going to lose their homes. We're going to get more foreclosures. Businesses won't come. And if by chance the casino doesn't come, <laughs> we're in even more trouble. And it is true. We need more police. We need more fire. My heart's out to them. Okay? Because we need them desperately. Some of our schools need repair. Our roads are desperate. But what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You can't, kit, can't keep hitting people for tax money that they don't have. They really don't have it. Let's hope to God the casino comes because it's going to do a lot for the city of Brockton. But right now there isn't any. And what's, what's happening is our city politicians are afraid to stand up to the unions. And I'm a unionist. I've been in teachers' union for 35 years. You saw what East Bridgewater just did. The teachers' union took a freeze in salary for two years so they wouldn't lay anybody off. Come on. You know, there comes a time when you have to say to the unions, no, job security is more important than raises. And I don't know what we're going to do. I really don't know what we're going to do if you raise the taxes again this year. Now, I hope to God the casino comes. I do, because it will do so much for the city. But right now, it's still in limbo, okay? And I know so many people, businesses that will go under. They will go under if you raise the taxes again. Homeowners will go under if you raise the taxes again. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to be heard? Please come forward and state your name to, to the clerk. Good evening. My name is Jacob L. Taggart, Jr. Um, I, I'm a resident of Brockton, 31 Atlanta Street, 
with my wife and two children. Um, as I said, I am a lifelong resident of the city of Brockton, and I am here tonight to explain to the residents of Brockton that we have allowed a vast amount of our cash to be concentrated into, a hand, into the hands of a select group of people in their special interests. Year after year, the budget and the actual financial results have not correlated. The Massachusetts Department of Revenue has recommended that we develop a succession plan for our Chief Financial Officer, John Condon. We cannot continue to tax on the backs of hard-working residents and business owners of Brockton, pricing ourselves out of the market in the future that we all deserve. Our city is under siege. Our police and fire departments are understaffed, yet the money exists to properly fund our safety. We have over $120 million in cash in the bank. Last year, we had $22 million available in unassigned funds and $13 million in free cash. This money was parked into a retirement account. So this is a statement that you know, I had prepared. So now I'm going to speak as just Jacob. Okay, Jacob Tagger, somebody, like I said, my family's over here. A lot of my friends are in Brockton. Some of you guys, I, I love and respect you, and I've gotten to know you. Um, last mayoral election, we were all promised change. Okay? I, I don't envy the position you guys are in right now, because you don't write the budget. You have to approve or, or not approve it, and I understand that. I understand that deni a dynamic, and I'm learning more and more. Um, last mayoral election, there was a lot of energy, and we were promised change transparency, accountability. And I'm here today, and I know there's people here that believe this, that that's not the case. That's not what happened. It's politics as usual. So today, after speaking to my wife and children and my friends, I am announcing that I am running for mayor for the City of Champions in Boston. Thank you. Jacob, you, you threw a curb to me because this wasn't a political rally, so I'm, I'm not appreciative to that. It was a public hearing for you to address the concerns with the budget, which you did do, but you threw that little curb, but it's already done. Anyone else here wishes to speak before the council, please do so. State your name and address to the clerk because I'm going to wind up pretty soon because we have to go into the budget hearing. So if anyone else is, wants to come up and say something in regards to the budget, please do so. If not, I'm going to end up closing the hearing. Anyone else here? Mr. Chairman. Councilor Dinapoli. I just want to make uh, this announcement that uh, I'll, I'll let this gentleman speak. I'm yeah, sorry. and, and first off, Councilor, I don't want to get into a deliberation. After no, no, I, I don't. The hearing. I, there's, there's been a lot of comment to here tonight stating that uh, we, we set this budget. We do not. This is the mayor's budget. This is Bill Carpenter's budget. He put it right. together and he gives it to us. That's right, Council. We'll define it. That's as far as we go. Hold on, Council. Go right ahead, sir. Your name and address to the clerk. My name is Bob Cogan. I live in Ward 2. I affectionately refer to it as a combat zone. I think most of you understand and know that. A few months back, I asked. Uh, Councilor Monahan, after you've driven the taxpayer out of here, who's going to support the city? Any answers? Those of us that are still here, I guess. Thank right? you, gentlemen. Okay. You're welcome. Anyone else before I declare the hearing closed? Name and address to the clerk, please. My name is Frederick Noonan. My address is 88 Sophia Rav in Brockton, Mass. Uh, I just wanted to say I didn't intend to speak here this evening, but after hearing the last few comments, uh, I hope that this body is uh, intellectually armed enough to withstand the amount of political popularism and financial popularism that I'm witnessing. I think you folks are bright enough to come to the ter determination that if we need to raise taxes 
in a way that's strategic and temporary, perhaps that what, that's what needs to be done. Again, I expect this to go over like a thought in, in church behind me, but that's how I feel. I think we need to look at some of the nonprofit organizations in this city that arguably have placed a strain on Brockton. I, I acknowledge the fact that that's not necessarily a popular thing to be discussing, and on the surface, maybe not even very compassionate. But there is a legitimate argument to be made there. You were put here for a legitimate reason by people who are not under the impression that you should be swayed by the rising tides. That's my opinion. Thank you. You have my blessing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> anyone else? Is there anyone else that wishes to be heard in regards to the uh, fiscal year 2016 budget? Please come forward. If there isn't, then I'm going to declare the part of the public hearing closed. Seeing none? The public hearing part is, is closed. Before we begin uh, with hearings, and the mayor will be here uh, just in a few minutes because he's going to make a quick presentation. He's our number one uh, uh, first guest to, to be before us this evening. Again, counselors, uh, you should have version three, which is in front of you, which is your agenda. And um, Monday night, tonight, June 1st, Tuesday night, June 2nd, Wednesday night, June 3rd. And I am indicating to you that I want us to stay within um, the way that it's set up, pretty much the way it's been set up for the last couple of um, budget hearing sessions and not deviate from it because I think it's only fair we just keep it moving as fast as we can and get through everything uh, than to take people or any, any such things out of order. So, um, you know, with that being said, uh, I'm going to um, find where the, the mayor is. We're going to take just a quick five-minute recess for anyone else who wishes to leave the, uh, um, the chambers. Five minute recess. Mr. President, I want to thank you for the water. <laughs> City Council Finance meeting is back in session for the first um, budget hearing evening for June 1st. Uh, we're going to um, start with a um, quick presentation um, from Mayor Bill Carpenter, who is present here with us this evening. As you know, he is our first guest as well. And as it was indicated early on in Councilor DiNapoli, you are correct, and I'm sure the Mayor will indicate it as well. Um, yes, this is the mayor's budget, and I know, um, it, be it the mayor's budget and the mayor presents us his budget, it is up to us now to appropriate the funds to run the city of Brockton and do it into the best ability that we all can because we have to make sure that we do it in the best interest of the people of the city of Brockton because our greatest concern is to be able to offer an adequate level of service. So uh, with the difficult year uh, two that we've all had, the economy, as far as I'm concerned, is still spinning. I think the mayor and his staff um, and uh, all of us are trying to do what we can to make sure that the city of Brockton continues to flourish. So that being said, um, I'm going to let the mayor have a few minutes. He wants to make his presentation <coughs> in regards to the budget that he's put before us, and then we'll hear from him in regards to his uh, mayor's budget. Good evening, Mayor Carpenter. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening, uh, members of the city council. And uh, I do agree, it is the mayor's budget that's submitted, but certainly over the next three, four, or five days, uh, the council will do a great deal of due diligence in reviewing that budget and uh, has the option to make changes. So uh, I will tell you that uh, not just myself, but all of the department heads will be here over the next few days and willing to work with you in any way we can to uh, help you in that process. I would like to just make a few general overview remarks about the budget before we start getting into all the uh, minutia for the next few days. I am here tonight to present to you a balanced budget for fiscal year 2016. This year's budget has been a challenge uh, because the cost of operating city government is increasing at a rate of over $10 million per year. In fact, over the past three years, the general fund budget has increased $33 million for an average annual increase of $11 million per year. 
Against this year's $10 million uh, budget increase, that's the general fund budget, uh, our net state local aid only increased about $4.5 million, the net, net chapter 70 plus net unrestricted local aid. Less than half of what the cost of doing business has gone up. And now we couple that structural deficit with one of the worst winters in history, nine feet of snow that now leaves us shoveling out from under a two and a half million dollar snow removal deficit that now has to be paid. We spent a total this year in snow removal of four point eight million dollars, two point five million more than the two point three million that was in the FY15 budget. And that was a reasonable amount to be budgeted at the time. No one could have ever anticipated for, uh, financed for, or, or paid for that level of snow removal. But you know, it, it actually could have been worse because as we look around, Worcester spent 6.6 .6 million and Quincy spent 13 million. So our 4.8 million sounds a little easier to live with when we look at the situation that some other cities similar to Brockton find themselves in. Even with a number of budget cuts already in place, putting these two factors together, our initial budget showed an overall deficit of $6.3 million. $6.3 million deficit coming into the budget. So we went to work to determine what $6.3 million in budget cuts would look like. And it wasn't pretty. The closing of at least one school with teacher layoffs probably close to 300. The closing of at least one fire station with firefighters laid off. Reducing the number of police officers with unfilled vacancies. And in fact, layoffs across every city department. And we would even be looking at turning off some of the city street lights. After looking at those cuts, I came to the conclusion that we just could not cut that deeply. And as elected officials, we have an obligation to fulfill the promises of city government, to preserve public safety, to provide a quality public school education for our children, and to sustain essential city services. So I determined that I would have to utilize the allowable 2.5% increase in the tax levy this year to close the budget gap. Now, let's be clear. I am no less committed to property tax relief than I was a year ago when I did submit a balanced budget to you that did not require us to use any of the 2.5% levy increase. But this year, I cannot jeopardize public safety, we cannot decimate the Brockton public schools, and we do have to pay off that $2.5 million snow removal deficit. The 2.5% tax levy will generate about $3 million. So to get to a balanced budget, we've still had to make over $3 million in budget cuts over and above the additional $3 million of revenue. However, despite having made over $3 million in budget cuts, the FY16 budget that you have before you this evening maintains level staffing of both the fire and police departments while providing a $5 million increase in funding to the schools. In fact, by maintaining level police department staffing, we have qualified for a federal COPS grant that will pay us the cost of two additional police officers to add to our force. As we look to the future, it's clear that we will not be able to continue to provide essential services to our residents without developing additional sources of revenue. We need to expand our tax base, generating new revenues from new taxpayers. Continuing our work and investment in economic development is critical as we help existing businesses to expand, bring new business to the city, and attract families to the city of Brockton to buy their home. We've already created new additional streams of revenue, such as our sale of tax title properties that generated over a million dollars this year. That money cannot be spent in this year's budget, but will be available to help balance next year's budget. 
And that will be a million dollars next year that we will not have to ask the taxpayers for. We must also ask the large nonprofit corporations in the city, many of whom drain our public safety resources, to step up and help us. And counselors, it's time to put the long, costly legal battle over the electric plant behind us and begin collecting the guaranteed $4 million per year that we so desperately need. Over the next several evenings, we'll work closely with you as you review the FY16 budget. And I certainly appreciate the opportunity to appear before you this evening. And uh, I will now make myself available to answer any questions you may have regarding uh, the mayor's office budget. Uh, just, thank just, you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just before we do that, uh, if anyone has any questions in regards to anything the mayor had just made comment to before we go into his uh, department, I'll yes. entertain. Council, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you for your presentation. A, a couple questions. One is concerning the increasing concern around climate change and how it impacts snow and flooding. And I know that uh, ma the mayors of Boston and some of the surrounding cities have a work group to kind of look through um, the impact on cities financially for, for changes. And I, I know the. Uh, I read this article, passed it to the DPW commissioner here. I know that the city, um, at least in the email, has agreed to join that commission. I'm interested in an update if, if we've joined and have, what are we learning about the financial impact of climate change moving yeah, if forward. If I'm familiar with what you're asking about, um, there's a, uh, is this regarding the flooding and, and Army Corps of Engineers? Um, I think no? it's a little broader. It's more of a strategy group. All right, so the thing that I'm familiar with is that something that uh, you've talked about in the past and that we've been seeking for a while is uh, for the Army Corps of Engineers to come in and using their resources help us assess, assess flood it's management different, control. Different. Okay. So I don't pretend to be an expert on climate change. Okay. So I'll ask the DPW Commissioner when he comes because yeah. I think, um, you know, if we're looking at... tomorrow night. Yep. Yeah. I just, I'm just interested in knowing if the kind of weather that we are seeing and we're still budgeting for weather that we're, we've historically seen, but not for weather that we're likely to receive yeah. moving forward, how that impacts the budget. Um, the, the second question is around um, not um, increasing taxes in the last year and how that's impacting the severity of the budget this year. Um, which was my concern when we passed the budget. I, mean, I made that publicly known last year that I was concerned that we would find ourselves in a crunch moving forward. Have, have we learned from that ex experience? So um, are we planning differently for next year based on what we've learned? No, I, I don't think necessarily counts. I think how we're planning differently is that we are, you know, we've only been here for 16, 17 months. We're uh, continuing to work on developing additional streams of revenue. I cited one of them, but um, I do think whether it's uh, electronic billboards, other opportunities that present themselves for the city to raise revenue. Um, and I think that that's an ongoing process that will generate more revenue each year as we begin to reap the results. Uh, we just haven't got to the point yet that any of this additional money that we've taken in is available to spend yet. Um, in terms of last year's budget versus this year's budget, I think we really have to look at each year's budget as they come up. So certainly we look down the road and try to project what future expenses may look like. Um, but, you know, I, I don't see that, I don't think we've done anything a lot differently this year than we did last year other than looking at all the factors we're faced with, realize that this year's deficit, uh, primarily due to uh, snow, is uh, substantially larger than last year's was. And uh, I think that had it been a couple million dollars deficit, I would have attempted to balance the budget with cuts. We're looking to generate revenues each year. Um, you know, I supported the casino proposal because I know what 10, 12, 14 million dollars a year would mean to this city. And I'm still cautiously hopeful that the, the city will select the Brockton developers for that gaming license. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, sure. uh, <coughs> Council Stewart. Anyone else before we...
before we go any further, and I, I just want to make one uh, comment to a question. Mr. Condit, do you, you just want to stay there and just be our mentor as, as usual and make your, uh, <laughs> make your uh, comments at, at the end under your department, or do you have anything you want to say just before the mayor uh, I go into anything you want to say pertaining to the budget? We'll get to you at the end of the session on Wednesday. Thank you, uh, Mr. Condon. So, with that being said, then we're going. Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Barrett. Good evening, Councilor. <coughs> that was a uh, interesting bit of uh, presentation. I have a question. You said you want to raise about three million dollars with the levy. Is that the number that you used? Right. What I, I think what I said was utilizing the full two and a half percent levy for this year will generate about $3 million in revenue. Okay. Round it off. Okay, so okay. So in, in December when we set the tax levy, you're looking for the, for the maximum amount of money possible to raise $3 million, whatever that would be. Right. Now, if I, if I can recall to how many single family houses we have and businesses and whatnot, that's about $200 per household. No, I think we're predicting at about $90. Ninety dollars per household. Yeah, which I don't take lightly, and that's what I tried to explain. That uh, I think we really <coughs> looked at this in great depth, but I think that most of the residents of the city, faced with the choice between what the effects of cutting the budget over six million dollars would look like, and, and some of the things I described, eliminating school busing for regular ed students, that would have been gone. Um, I think looking at those impacts versus about seven or eight dollars a month for the average homeowner. Um, I do it reluctantly. I do it as a last resort, but I do have to ask the taxpayers for a little bit more this year. That would be, that would be more money for a, a business, of course. Right. I mean, you guys set the actual rates. That's, you know, but I'm balancing the budget based upon what the two and a half increase does on the entire levy. Oh, do you see and we did also have about, I should say, about eight, we're projecting about $800,000 in new growth 800, built into growth. the budget. Yeah. Do you see any money from every, every year the state always comes up with a, a bonus to us in like September or October? Do you see anything coming down the line? I don't know. I mean, uh, it, it's a new administration. I don't, you know, the state seems to have their own budget problems. Um, will certainly be lobbying for any opportunity to bring money. And I think it's not unusual that, you know, some money comes in from time to time during the year. And uh, if it does and we have a need for it, then certainly we'd be bringing that in front of the council, asking the council for an appropriation. We can't spend any money that comes in without coming to the council and having the council approve it. Okay. So that would be a decision we would make together. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Thank Mr. you, Chairman. Thank you, Council. Let me just get Councilor Barnes and then Councilor Sullivan and then... Mr. Chairman, I just, I just threw you to, to Councilor Stewart. I just wanted to remind the Council that there was actually a tax increase last year relative to an appropriation request on legal expenses that we cut to 500000 right, I just wanted to remind Council of that. Thank you. Thank no. you, Councilor Sullivan. Council Absolutely. Barnes. Councilor Sullivan is correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just looking at last year's budget really quickly and comparing your particular department and last year. Okay, so we're, we're on to my budget now? You want to okay. be on his? Yes. Oh, we're not there set? yet? I can wait. Okay. No, 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 that's okay. Just know I'm going to need my glasses. We can move that direction, right. but I was just taking questions. Right. Right. If not, no, we go right ahead. His budget. We can move to the mayor's budget at this point. So. Oh, okay. Go right ahead, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's a line item in your budget that didn't appear last year, and it was for um, contract services or a stipend. What is that? The stipend, you talk about the 11,562? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that 11,562 is the monies that were paid previously under the um, emergency management budget <coughs> uh, for the communications director for Brockton Emergency Management Agency. Uh, I asked Fred Fontaine to take that position this past year as part of our overall revamping of Brockton Emergency Management BEMA. Um, I, I asked Fred for a couple of really important reasons. One, that he'd been a long-time volunteer with BEMA and was experienced working there. 
but what, one of the things I identified as one of the clear needs coming in with our administration around emergency management um, was the need to be able to, in such a multilingual city like Brockton, to make sure that we were communicating emergency notices and information in more than one language, which had not been done in the past. So I thought that Fred offered some real opportunities to be the communications director and to take the responsibility uh, in the time of emergency for using a variety of media to communicate with other groups within the city that speak a language other than English primarily, Cape Verdean Creole and Haitian Creole. So we um, assigned and I actually started to send up to the council at one point and council at DiNapoli uh, pointed out the fact to us that we can't have one city employee right. paid out of two different departments. So we withdrew that. Uh, so what I've done in this year's budget is I've eliminated that 11-5 over in the emergency management. So there's a corresponding minus over in the BEMA budget. Move the 11-562 into the mayor's budget so that I can pay Fred for doing that job. It's really an accounting move so that I, I think Fred should get paid for doing the job. He's doing extra work at BEMA and uh, he's very valuable and we'd be paying it to somebody. However, I have to do it through the mayor's office. But doesn't that still present the problem of one employee working for two offices? I, I don't believe so because he's only being paid out of one budget. I've, I've asked him, we've, we've broadened his job description. He's providing the function that was <coughs> formally done. Let me put it that way. He's providing the function that was formally done by the communications director of BEMA. The communications director of BEMA, that position has been eliminated in this year's budget and we have broadened Fred's uh, job duties to include um, working with BEMA and particularly in the area of emergency communications. Okay, so with that, now that I understand that, so now that money goes to Fred as like a, I mean it says stipend or something in here. So Right, because it's separate and distinct from his original basic job duties. It's, still, it's two checks to one person, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't so know if it's a separate check. I think it's in the one same check. One big check to one person. Okay. So now in, so in comparison to last year, the only two people technically getting a raise in your office is you and Fred. Correct. Okay. And my raise, I would love to not take it. I looked into it. It's statutory. I don't have a choice. No one else is, is under that provision or? Not that I'm aware of. Jay, can you help me with that? Am I the only one? No. The automatic raise. It's statutory. It's statutory. There's no, I don't have any discretion on it. I can't refuse it. And just, just to find my, is it not based upon the, the daily index? Am I correct? Isn't that how that works? Yeah. Yes. That's how it was passed under Mr. And that's, that's a provision that's been in effect right. going back to the units administration. Right. Oh, okay. Well, I only have two books. There was a home rule petition adopted by the legislature, I don't know, 12 years ago or so, and it provides the manner in which the mayor's salary is set, and his salary shall be the amount that's determined by that consumer price index inflation. Shall so be. It's okay. Shall be. I get it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's not a discretionary item, Councillor. I asked. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, you Mr. You're Chairman. welcome. Councillor DiNapoli? On uh, the mayor's budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, Mr. <coughs> the, the mayor answered the question about the, the stipend with uh, Mr. Fontaine. You're all set with that? Councillor Fontaine. I'm set. Thank okay. you. Okay. Councillor Rodriguez? You had a question? Yes, I do. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, well, Good evening, Councillor. Mr. Mayor, how are you? Thank Great. You. Uh, my questions is with regards to, um, and right off the bat, excuse my voice, I'm no, I've got a cough a, drop in myself. I'm dying here of a cold, but what are you going to do? It's with regards to economic development. Yep. Uh, last year, we basically budgeted $250,000 for both budget items on that particular item. And this year, the department basically asked you for an increase of $25,000, but can you just kind of explain sure. to us why you basically yeah. move the funds from uh, one category to another? Well, first, to clarify, they, ac <coughs> they actually request an additional 50000 and as I was doing budget cuts, I, I reduced it by half. So I believe that their request was for an additional 25000 on each of the two line items. Uh, I eliminated one of them 
which was the um, the 21st century portion of it and I did allow to stay in place the 25,000 for the stadium <coughs> maintenance and that's just based upon attending some of the B21 board meetings this year and listening to some presentations about condition of the stadium it's they're very concerned that with the age of the stadium things are cropping up they ha actually having an audit done of the stadium by an independent consultant to give them the recommendations of what are the conditions that need to be addressed uh, but they're impressing upon me that there are some maintenance matters there that need to be addressed that are going to cost some money and as I say they requested 50 I reduced it to 25 but at the same time I know we're all um, walking around saying what we need to do to bring more business and and do mm -hmm. more development in the city uh, for some odd reason I would I would have preferred to have seen that in economic development itself versus just to uh, to pay for a, you know cost at the stadium so well the council can certainly consider that um, I think the reason I didn't eliminate it completely and I only eliminated half of it was I think we do have to be concerned about preserving the asset over there and we can't just let it fall into disrepair now there were some things that uh, were paid for by the new owner of the rocks <coughs> last year as part of that new lease and I think the stadium certainly looks better than it has for several years but they're looking at things like mechanical systems AC roofs things of that sort that the stadium is now elevator maintenance uh, 13 14 years old that are cropping up and and I think <coughs> the path they've taken is to bring someone in from the outside to do an analysis of the whole facility and make recommendations as to what needs to be done but I think they're sure that there's work there that needs to be done now for the folks that are watching us at home or you know even some of the folks in here can you just take us um, you know basically a step by step what does that $125,000 gets us most of it is spent on utilities um, but I believe that the extra 25 would be earmarked no I understand the 25 I'm talking about the the overall amount uh, of 100 let's say $100,000 what does that basically cover or why are we paying $100,000 to the stadium well I think the the appropriation for years has been 250,000 of which 150 for economic development and 100 towards the stadium and I believe Jay help me with uh, mostly utilities right. yeah, okay so the 100 goes towards utilities insurance and maintenance but they see the cost of maintenance that not enough is left over to do the kind of maintenance that they believe the facility needs now uh, Mr. Mayor, I, rumor has it, and I hope the chairman will allow me just one iota of, uh, of a leeway okay. here, but rumor has it there that the rocks are behind in their utility bills to the city. I Is that... Um, I believe that the last time I checked they were behind a payment but they were making arrangements to get it caught up the current ownership <coughs> of the rocks has only been there for a year so they personally are only responsible for the bills going back a year I do believe they had fallen one payment behind and I believe that um, working through the license commission that they were making arrangements to get that payment made so I'll, I'll be happy to get you the up-to-the-date answer tomorrow and email it to you okay so when you say utilities you're not necessarily saying water and sewer you're basically saying electricity and primarily gas. electricity I believe <coughs> all right thank you mr. mayor thank yep. you mr. chairman you're welcome uh, Councilor. any other councilors have a question I know you already asked well, let me go to someone who hasn't asked him a question not about the budget okay Councilor Stewart you're fine uh, thank you Mr. Chairman um, Mr. Mayor Here I just want it this way okay yeah so just so I, and this is really not, uh, just a broad question about how we're investing our money so it's a quarter of a million dollars 
for economic development broadly, with half of that money going toward the stadium, which we all have issues about how that's structured. But that's, and then we have the planning department, which is roughly about the same amount of money. So the city, if you're looking at economic development, the city is spending a little over half a million dollars for economic development. And then I know that your office does a little bit of it and things like that. Well, I think that of the 250 in the past, um, 150 has historically been the amount going to B21 right. towards their budget. 100 was set aside for the stadium. So there's 150 going to B21 as a subsidy. Long-term planning, I'd, I'd like to wean them off of it. Um, but in the short run, I think it, this, for the first time, we're really put together a team of a lot of different people that are all working together to attract business and attract investment to the city. So sure, the city planner included in his title is also economic development. That's certainly a <coughs> portion of his job. Right. I would say, though, that the primary uh, functions of the planning department is, is city planning, which has been something that we were lacking for quite some time and has made a big difference to now. And, and I'll tell you, if you're looking at the amount, when I look at other cities similar to the size of Brockton, they have much larger oh, planning really departments my, than we that do. That was mostly my concern. And I, yeah. I try to express the concern every budget cycle to keep it uh, top of mind for folks. I think a little over, even if we were generous and um, tagged it at over half a million dollars a year, uh, that's way too little in terms of economic development. When you look at the police department, for example, we're spending close to $20 million a year. Uh, and so, and you put on top of that the fire department and other departments, and you have to start <laughs> to question well, what are the police protecting and what is the fire department protecting if we're not putting more money and bringing growth here? And I, uh, I know this is not a meeting about strategy, but about the budget, but um, I just am always concerned that we're spending so well, little I, money on developing I get, new I growth. guess my response, Council, would be that uh, since I appeared in front of you a year ago with this budget, we've added both a city planner and a junior planner. So obviously those things were built in that budget that you approved last year. I think that's a pretty substantial investment over where we were a year earlier. And I think that, you know, right now we have to live within our means. But I think in terms of long-term planning, I would agree with your premise that we need a larger planning department if we're really going to spur the type of economic development that we want here. I will say, though, Rob May has made a big difference here. Getting him a junior planner has made him a lot more effective. Um, and I see a, a, a dramatic difference in the attitude and the approach of investors when they come to look at Brockton now and think about a project when they realize that we do now have a top-notch professional planner that they can work with and we didn't have that for a long time so you know I would thank the council for appropriating that money in the past year's budget. Okay. Uh, thank you Mr. Mayor. Thank you Mr. Thank Mr. you Councilor. Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Councilor. Okay, I, just, I just had a question relative to, uh, and I think the total amount is 493664, which is your, um, your personal services non-overtime, uh, which is itemized relative to each, each member of your staff and what they get paid. Are any, are any of these individuals paid additional funds from any grants that you're aware of, Mr. Mayor? No. Um, as we discussed in last year's budget, the communications director has a substantial amount of his salary yep. coming out of the revolving fund from cable. But nobody else? Other than that, I'm not aware of anyone receiving grant funding. Okay. And, and if I could just, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Yes. Conan, I just, Mr. Conan, I just had a yep. quick follow-up with the mayor some relative to Councilor Bonds and Mr. Fontaine. Um, the statement was made that the 11562 is really for an accounting uh, accounting issue. It's it's being uh, struck from emergency management office, and then it's incorporated into the mayor's office. And my colleague asked, it, can that be done? And I just wanted to ask you that same question. I would say yes, because uh, Mr. Fontaine is a mayor's office staff employee. The stipend is just another mechanism for identifying compensation to him which the mayor thinks is for a particular purpose, but as the mayor's staff, I think he can be directed to almost any activity that the mayor wishes him to within city government being paid out of that budget. And in, in your opinion, that would pass must I would with the I would DOR think so. as well? I would, I, would, I would think so because he isn't pay, being paid from two, two different budgets, being paid from one. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Chair. Councilor. Any other questions does anyone have for uh, the mayor's budget for Mayor Carpenter? 
Seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Well, Mayor. Councilors, thank you very much, and uh, we'll uh, all be working with you over the next few days to try to get any information that you need as you do your due diligence going through the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Madam Clerk, we have the next um, next item. Southeastern Regional School, Lewis Lopes, Superintendent. Good evening, Mr. Superintendent. How are you? Good, good. Good, good evening. Welcome. Thank you. So I'm joined tonight. Uh, Mark Lindy is here. As, as you know, he represents uh, one of two members uh, of a uh, ten-member school committee uh, that represents the city of Brockton. Uh, just uh, 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 briefly, um, overall, when we're developing our 2016 budget, our enrollment uh, continues to, to increase. We're up uh, just under 4.5% enrollment. Um, and um, our economically disadvantaged is up 14%. Uh, um, academically, we've been recognized as a level one uh, high school. And um, on the career side, we've had a record number of students, um, seniors uh, getting paid externships, uh, which is, is great uh, in this economy given the, the, the large number I mentioned of economically disadvantaged students. Next Wednesday, we graduate 293 seniors. In the, and uh, next Thursday, we graduate uh, approximately 70 adults in our post-secondary program. So, uh, so we continue to grow. Uh, uh, Brockton makes up uh, about 61.5% of our population, 866 students from the city of Brockton attend Southeastern. That's an increase of about 5.5% from the previous year. Um, the, the assessment uh, request uh, for 2016 is three million one hundred thirty three thousand dollars and ninety seven three one three three zero nine seven um, which is up um, again primarily due to the increase in enrollment um, and uh, we continue to operate at net school spending or minimum contribution so we ask uh, the nine communities that, that we serve we, we only ask them for the minimum amount set by uh, Department of Elementary Secondary Ch Education Department of Revenue so I think with that I'll open it up to any questions or Comments. Councils, any questions for the Council Dubois? Thank you so much for being here. You're doing some great work at South, Southeastern, and I appreciate it. Um, can you tell me what's going on with the, um, the issue that so many of your school systems had where you weren't paying your portion of, was it of retirement? Can you explain that to my fellow councilors and tell, tell us if any of the money in this is um, reflecting that back? Do. It, it is, sure, and, and thank you, and thanks to, to your assistant and, and all the other state reps uh, that got voted out. It's a special legislation filed under... Uh, I don't a, think my colleagues know about it. Okay, under, under, a, um, under a finding by the uh, a federal audit of the state retirement board, um, we were asked to uh, start paying an employer percentage of re state retirement, which would have resulted in an increased bill of anywhere between 600 to a million dollars a year. Uh, for state retirement, our, our portion of the state retirement bill. Um, they were also asking for to go back and get some money from previous fiscal years. So, so what that was going to be for 35 years, we hadn't paid a dime, um, nor were we asked to pay. And so they were saying, well, we're going to forgive all this, but we're not going to forgive it before 2013. Uh, we, we, we asked uh, for special legislation. Um, it, it was supported and was filed, and it now sits at the Senate. Um, I, I don't know the, the Senate bill number. Okay. But, uh, so that's where it's at. So what's reflected in the budget is a $623,000 uh, assessment for FY16 state retirement. Because we know going forward we're going to have to pay some of it. What it's going to be is still unclear. Um, but, but we know that, that there is going to be some obligation that we're going to have to pay. And this is for employees that are part of the state retirement system and not part of the Massachusetts teachers retirement system. So is that apportioned out um, based on the percentage or based on where the teacher lives or wh what is that? Yeah, so that's, that's the interesting part. It's, it's, it's actually based on um, currently the way the law is read. It's based on on once an employee retires and they exhaust their annuity, we get a bill for 100 percent of the cost for the rest of their, you know, while the, while the state retirement board is paying off. So that could jump from year to year. And we did a, we did a very preliminary actuarial study saying that that number will, under that system, will quickly double and will be up over a million dollars in, in less than two years uh, to an unsustainable level. So, so we're not only asking for 
for um, 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 relief under for past bills, but we're also looking at something that can be that can be planned as a like a, an employer percentage based, um, um, which is what most people that pay into the state retirement employer percent pays a percentage and the employee pays a percentage that we can budget for. So, are you finding that you you are getting support for that change, or w how would that change be um, accomplished? Yes, it's been broadly supported. So, so um, you know, wait and see. I guess is okay. where we're, where we're at right now. We're we're, we're trying to do the previous bills first, um, and trying and just asking a lot of questions about what is this going to look like and so forth. And you know, quite frankly, we're not getting a lot of answers at this point. But there's, uh, I think, there's 43 regional commit regional bo uh, boards and school and school districts that are affected by this affecting uh, just under 187 communities. So, so that can have some significant impact in the budgets moving forward. It would. So if you figure a million dollar, a million dollar a year, Brockton pays 65 percent of that, that would be a huge increase in assessment uh, to, to the city. So, uh, so, so it definitely, uh, is definitely something that, that in the future may become significant. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Any other? Councils have any questions for the Superintendent Council? So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Superintendent. Uh, thanks again for coming. Uh, I do want to acknowledge and thank Wayne McAllister and Mark Lindy, both Brockton residents who serve on the board, so thank you. Um, I just want to make sure I get the stats right. So it's been a 5% increase, and it's almost 61.5% uh, of the population from the City of Champions, from Brockton. Correct. That's awesome. Um, I just want to thank you. I, I, I was a little disappointed to hear that uh, John Williams Mentoring Group, John's a Brockton guy, Champion City, I know they've done yeoman's work at Southeast, and, and I'm hoping, I know they're no longer there, I'm hoping uh, Southeastern's loss is Brockton's gain. They're going to be doing some benefit in the Brockton school system, but I'm hoping in the future it can be revisited because I think it could really benefit both systems, that mentoring program. So I just want to go on record saying that. Great. Thank and you, Superintendent. And that program was a great program and, and, and uh, was very effective for us. Very, very effective. So hopefully in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Councilor Barnes. Yes. Hello, um, Mr. Superintendent. I just want to say uh, thank you so much for our recent in, uh, engagement and with uh, Mr. Lindy. And also, I'd like to uh, take a note from my brother's book and thank uh, the two representatives from Brockton, Mr. McAllister and Mr. Lindy, for serving on the board and serving with, di with distinction. And I look forward to our uh, further collaboration with the Brockton students, the increase that we have. So thank you very much for this uh, very in-depth budget and um, very appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions for the Superintendent? Good evening. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you, you being evening. here. Thank you. Madam Clerk, the next one. Council on Aging, Janice Fitzgerald, Director. Good evening, Madam. Good evening. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Anything you'd like to say before we begin? Or? Speak. Um, well, I was just here not too long ago giving you an update about the Council on Aging and what we've been up to. Um, I will say our, our seniors' needs continue to grow in the community. Um, we did have a great year. Our focus for the upcoming year would be our new addition. We welcome new members daily. Um, and I really want to um, give a shout out to my staff who um, really goes above and beyond every single day um, to make sure that we're taking care of our seniors in the city. So my budget was level funded and I'll take any questions. And Councilor Sullivan. <coughs> Ms. Fitzgerald, I just want to first of all thank you and your staff uh, for what you do to the, to the seniors in the city of Brockton. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a wonderful uh, place that people consider home when they go there. And when many of them go there on a daily basis. They really do. So um, I wish we had more money to give you because it's, it's money well spent. But if you could just take the opportunity to announce the march that's coming up, the walk that's coming up, I think it's an appropriate time to mention that. Yep. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm hoping I'm getting the date right. June 15th. It's a Monday. We're doing our annual um, march against World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Um, we started it. I think this is our third year. We um, have signs and balloons and we uh, march down Main Street or up Main Street, however you look at it, to Old Colony Elder Services. We uh, have some water and head back to the uh, Council on Aging for a nice lunch. Um, but it truly is an issue. It's one that's um, very important to me. 
So as long as I can get out there and, and march, even if I have to do it on my own, I will. So I certainly welcome anyone that day. We start at 12 o'clock on June 15th, and thank you very much for mentioning that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Any other uh, councillors that wish to ask any questions of our senior member? I shouldn't say senior member. <laughs> <laughs> Should I right, you, you don't all have to laugh about that. <laughs> Don't worry, she'll get back at me later. You know that. Uh, yeah, but Mr. Condon was laughing the loudest. So. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions for? No, seeing none. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Pleasure. Madam Clerk, our next uh, department head, please. Planner, Robert May, Planner. <coughs> Mr. May. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to uh, open up and, and say that uh, I'm very excited about being here for my first budget presentation here at the City of Brockton. Um, this will take us through the first full year of my uh, tenure here and I uh, look forward to working with you. Thank you. Councilor Bonds. Yes, uh, Mr. May, sir. Just looking at the budget, the planner capital outlay, what is that? The 12000 Just what is that for? Uh, the planner capital outlay was a request that uh, we were making uh, to purchase a wide format printer scanner. Um, it, we make a lot of maps in our office or, or, and have a lot of documents that we want to digitize so that they can be up on the, on the web for people to um, participate with. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to um, keep that in our budget and uh, that item has been uh, basically zeroed out. Point of information, um, I believe we actually purchased a similar printer for the engineering department last budget cycle, if I'm not mistaken. Is that accurate? Is correct? Engineer? So I just, uh, I just... The engineering department does have a wide format pr uh, printer. It's in black and white. It, doesn't, it does copy, it does not scan, and it does not do it in color. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mr. May. Thank you, Council. I tried. Okay, thank you. Go Council. Yes, thank you. And Council Sullivan. <coughs> thank you. Good, good, good evening, uh, Mr. May. I just had a couple questions, um, and it's not big dollar amounts, but I'm going to ask them anyhow. Uh, relative to your, uh, your increase of $1,000 uh, relative to in-state travel, um, which is under plan of goods and services, could you just explain to us um, why the increase of $1,000 on that would be? Um, this is the first year that, that we're fully staffed uh, as a planning department or, or, or with two uh, planners. We do have a lot of um, in-state conferences, uh, meetings in Boston, um, meetings of the Gateway Cities Initiative, so we'll meet in, in several other communities. It does involve traveling to those places, uh, parking, and um, uh, that's where, and, and in-state conferences, and so that travel uh, expense is there now. And is that in the same vein, is that the $2,000 increase relative to memberships and services, would that be the same because now you have a junior planner? It, it is the same. Uh, we do have a new um, uh, uh, planning budget uh, or, or a planning initiative, and so there are professional membership organizations that we should belong to, including the American Planning Association, the New England um, uh, Economic Development uh, Professionals, the State of Massachusetts um, Economic Development Association. Those all fall into those um, categories. Okay. And my, my last question um, is relative to when I compare the budget from 2015 uh, of, of full-time uh, salaries, 180, almost 181 grand, 180, 955, um, to the recommended mayor's recommendation 2016. It's an increase of $13,000, and I'm just trying to figure out where that 13 grand comes into play. I would have to defer to Jay on salary. So I don't have a copy of last year's budget, but I don't think the full-time planner was funded for the full year, and so uh, he's in there for a full year this time. So I think the difference is probably the full year versus part year last year, and maybe I forget how long the junior planner was here. And, and, a, step and a step increase for the, for the step increases as well. Step increase plus based upon the, uh, for the 12 months. Yes. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. May. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Uh, you're welcome, Councilor Sullivan. Any other? Uh, 
Questions for our planner, councillors? Seeing none. <coughs> Mr. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Cal Councillor Rodriguez, I'm sorry if I didn't see you. Uh, a quick question, uh, Mr. Yes, May. In the, um, the purchase of services, the, uh, the funds that we spend on consultants, could you just give us an idea where those funds are allocated to or to whom? Uh, we've had a, um, a large drop in that program uh, over the last year. Uh, our department had been sponsoring the community service or community um, development outreach coordinator, uh, and we have also used some of those funds for historic preservation research and uh, a little bit for um, uh, downtown master planning. And next year, we want to be able to use some of those funds, the $55,000. Uh, to continue our work that we're starting out of um, uh, Campello uh, on the uh, uh, master plan for that, that neighborhood. Are these funds just for consultants or they actually go into some sort of uh, other goods being provided? Uh, no, primarily it's all consulting uh, technical expertise. They do create plans, documents, uh, they'll help us uh, as we craft new ordinances or new proposals. What kind of vetting do you use to select um, consultants? Is it something that you decide on your own or do you have some sort of a, um, a committee or a group of people that decide on that for you? We do follow the Massachusetts purchasing requirements under 30B. Um, if there are uh, uh, small items that uh, we use best practices for, more large items, and I forgot where the price tag um, flips, uh, I believe it's around $25,000 to a, a higher level where we usually procure three quotes and then choose the um, lowest quote. Um, anything above that, we would go through a request for proposal process in which we solicit um, uh, large contract amounts and um, there's that information is posted in the central register and on the city's web page when those proposals come in there's usually a selection um, team that reviews those and grades them as to whether or not they are most advantageous advantageous or not advantageous I believe is the third category um, could you use another body in your office to do some of that work versus uh, consulting the, uh, for the amount of money that you're consulting? I mean, let's say if you had another position within your office, could you use that to do some of the work that we're talking about versus consulting somebody from the outside? Um, having an extra body in our office would certainly allow us to do more. Um, and, and that's one of the things that we would like to look at in the future. Um, but there are some things that require technical expertise uh, whether it's historic um, preservation or um, uh, uh, diff financing, um, it, it does require an outside expert. Uh, there's also some planning documents uh, that need to be prepared by outside parties uh, as part of the uh, state requirements for, say, a, um, uh, a larger planning district. Uh, thank you, Mr. May. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Dubois. Hi, Mr. May. Thank you so much for being here. I think you're Counselor, doing a really good you? job, and thank you for working with me on a couple projects. I heard, I heard you mention DIF. What does it mean? DIF is a state program. Uh, it's district increment financing. It's similar to TIF, which is tax increment financing, but in a DIF situation, what happens is that a, a, the base tax rate is, is assessment rate is set, and the money that is generated incrementally above that is captured by the municipality and held in a special pot which can then be reallocated um, into specific projects that are in the DIF plan. For example, if, if we were building... Um, a, a Could you use the example that was pitched to us, like about doing it in downtown? Uh, for example, downtown is, is one of the areas that uh, we would like to see a diff um, generated. So as there's new growth downtown, uh, some of that money could be captured by the city and reinvested in projects that are needed downtown. For example, improving the infrastructure, um, uh, taking care of some slum and blight issues, 
Um, mostly uh, we're looking at the, in the downtown area around infrastructure, parking, and uh, making improvements to the uh, viaduct heights, uh, getting from one side of the tracks to the other. Okay, so um, when so how is that related to the budget? You had mentioned when I heard you saying um, diff, we, we're going to hire another consultant potentially in the coming um, budget cycle. Well, we're, we were able to use some of the monies that were um, rebated or, or incentives, investment dividends that the state had made from the 40R district, which is our downtown smart growth district. Right. We were able to save those dollars and put them into a planning process for downtown. Um, we do also uh, want to kick off a Campello planning process. Um, work was done under the uh, Urban Land Institute uh, about two years ago and uh, there's some momentum in that district uh, where we can be creating a, a master plan and potentially a diff in that district. We don't have the funding though to, we, we can do the, the, the planning, we don't have the funding to take it the rest of that way. Um, and we'll have to wait until the next fiscal year to, to go that far. So on the downtown um, district increment finance, that's what it stands for, right? Well, it's district, inc district improvement financing. District improvement financing. In the downtown diff, would that, in a perfect world, if everything went the way you wanted, could that be created um, during this upcoming budget cycle? Uh, yes, it could. Okay. So um, I just want to make my concerns um, known here because it is a budget issue and it's a budget issue that might sneak up on us. When I met with the consultant about this, the downtown district included the CRX rail line all the way down to Elliott Street and included the police station, which would be great because we'd be able to use tax dollars there. Um, and it, but what it didn't include was any part of Ward 6 no part of the 10th Plymouth District. And what I understood is not only would new um, development in this downtown district, any tax revenue coming from new development only be able to be spent in that downtown district. Any appreciation of value. I actually think that's yeah. not totally accurate. Oh, I believe that monies that are generated from a dip can be executed in a different part of, of the city. But correct? that is on the way the downtown General. one is proposed, correct? Uh, one more uh, time. No, Go ahead, please. We have not written a diff plan yet. Um, that is the document that is going to lay out the spending priorities um, and how we think the, the fund should be used. That then is, would be approved by right. uh, city council and each year um, we would have to, city council through the budgeting process would have to allocate funds to be expended right. um, in support of that DIFF plan. Right. Now, but, I, but I just want to get to the, to the point of where I was going here. So my conversation with the consultant that we hired, um, in our conversations, it might have been different than the conversation Councillor Stewart had, but the conversation I had with the consultant, the, the idea was to set up the downtown district and then um, re have the funds, so the funds, back to my explanation, any new tax revenue out of that downtown district can only be spent in the downtown district in the conversation that I had with the consultant, that it was actually the downtown district that was also going to utilize the new income from the tax revenue. But the part that was uh, eye-opening for me was any improvement so say Brockton becomes a real hot place to live and our downtown property values skyrocket. Any additional revenue on old existing buildings, like the, um, the, the housing that's being built over here across from uh, the Dunkin' Donuts, if that diff went through now, any tax revenue generated from those housing units would only be spent in the downtown. So we're introducing housing in the downtown that are going to have children in them, and then the revenue from the taxes on that housing isn't going to go to any district that actually has a school in it unless we're going to build a school in that diff district. So I just want to caution my fellow counselors that it, this really needs to be looked at extensively because it is important to invest in the downtown but we're building a lot of housing down here and the value is going to appreciate and that tax dollars if it's only going to be able to be spent in the downtown that means 
even less money is going to be going to our schools and no money is going to be coming towards six so i'm going to have a ton of people working in the downtown coming to spend money here and then none of those tax dollars that are generated because they live here are actually going to serve them so i'm very concerned about this type of financing so thank you thank you mr chairman thank you councillor any other questions for mr may councillor councillor as i should say seeing none thank, thank you, you very much and have a good evening thank you Madam Clerk, our next uh, <coughs> Board of Health, Louis Tatalia, Jr., Executive Director. Good evening, evening Councils. How are you? Fine, thank you. Any, you? any comment or are you just ready to take questions? Um, straightforward budget. Well, it's been about the same as the last two or three years. Nothing much has changed. Hasn't changed much. Councillor Dubois, yes, please. Yeah. So I have a couple questions. Um, thank you so much for being here. First off, a couple years ago, you and I spoke about the exciting idea of grading the restaurants after one of my first trips to New York City, and um, since they instituted it, and now Boston is going to institute it. And that time, you had thought, and please correct me if I remember and remember wrong, that it would be a lot of work to do and that maybe we, we aren't really staffed well enough to not only go out and make sure we inspect all the restaurants like we have to but then also to grade them so um, like when I go to New York I don't go to a restaurant that doesn't have an A in the front and they're not all expensive some of them are super cheap but they still have an A from the yeah. Board of Health because they have owners that are incredibly clean so what do you think about that I'm not in favor of it Okay. If Boston institutes it and it goes rather well, maybe you would reevaluate potentially? Um, possibly. Uh, the, the reason is sometimes um, an inspector can be favorable to one restaurant and I, I think there's some favoritism in that type of rating. Okay, and the only reason I, I really want to stress its importance is I went to a, a license commission hearing and there was a police officer that came in and said that, um, or an inspector came in and said that when they inspected the, the restaurant, they were in the kitchen and the person's food that they were about to cook was sitting on the floor in a big bucket of water and it was totally disgusting and totally unsanitary and she was literally <coughs> getting the fish out of the bucket that wasn't, you know, dead fish, it wasn't swimming around, and bringing it up and cooking it, and the code enforcement officer was disgusted, and the license commission didn't even hand out a citation, and I'm thinking at this point, maybe I need to start making my own decisions about what's clean and what isn't clean, and because I was shocked that the license commission didn't even issue a ticket over that, and I, I thank God I don't go to that restaurant, and I'm not going to say the name here, but it was, it, I was astonished. Well, I mean, me. when you say license commission, um, a license agent? You're talking a police officer? A police officer reported this issue and then the license and brought it to the licensing board for some sanction and then the licensing board heard the tale and didn't even cite them. So Well, I don't I don't think they It's a little outside the budget, but it was I don't just, like, I don't so think gross. they should cite them. They should have they should have referred it to the board of health. Yeah. 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 Well, what would, okay, that's great. And so um, how many people do you have on staff now? I have um, five inspectors and two ordinance enforcement officers. And um, at the height, how many people did you have on staff? Six inspectors, two ordinance enforcement officers, three secretaries. I have two secretaries now. So you're doing pretty well as far as staffing that we should be able to, you no, know. No, I've, I've been cut a sanitary inspector. That's so cutting instead that's of six, you have five. But what did you have last year? You had like three, right? I had uh, some re uh, retire. Uh, I'm sorry, some leave leave the city of Brockton, which we replaced. Okay. And then uh, right now, to be truthful, with you, I am shot one inspector. I am having a very difficult time keeping up with the uh, requirements of the state as far as doing uh, the inspections that they require. What about the certificate of fitness that the city just no longer enforces? 
We enforce it. I, I, I've, I've talked to many people at um, South Coast County's Legal Services that say that whenever they go to court, there are never certificates of fitness issued for years and years and years, even on housing authority properties. That when someone leaves an apartment and moves in, the, the landlord is supposed to call you and pay you a fee to come and give a new certificate of fitness. And then if it doesn't get, I, if I'm remembering correctly, if the, if the building doesn't get inspected in three years, you're supposed to come out and inspect it again. So you're, you're with the understanding that you are doing certificates of fitness as the ordinances say you're supposed to. Well, we do as much as we can, as for, and uh, we average probably 2,000 to 3,000 certificates of fitness applications that come into our office a year. Because the, as I understand, you also have just let me go one step further, and it's also the responsibility of the owner of the property to call us to make an inspection. Yep. Well, I think that there are a lot of exciting ways that we can expand the resources of your department in the coming year through changes in ordinances that are going to al potentially allow you to get um, more person power in your department to make sure that these certificate of fitness are happening. Because we have a lot of people living in the city with cockroaches, with rats, with no electricity, with water coming through their roofs, with pigeons living in their apartments with them, with landlords that are just letting the property go derelict so then no no family that doesn't have to live there because they're in such poverty chooses to live there and then a lot of times we get drug dealers and gang members so I'm thinking that the 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 level of um, upkeep of our rental stock and the level of renter that will actually rent it is playing a big role with the number of potential criminals and real criminals that are moving to the city. So I'm sorry that this is on your shoulders. Well, but it's, it's, not, it's been on my shoulders for 24 years. Right. And there's, been, a, you know, there's a lot and, and to do with that. And also I will say to you that the fact is every time that a property is sold, the landlord is supposed to come to us for certificates of fitness. Right. We are proactive in that fact because we have the Bankers and Tradesmen magazine that we, I mean, uh, newspaper, and every one of those multi-families uh, that have been sold, I personally have my, uh, one of my secretaries send out the certificate of fitness ordinance, and we follow them down, we give them a second notice, and after that we fine them. The problem is, is they come into court after they, they apply for a certificate of fitness just before their, their court date, and when we go into court, our fines are dismissed. Right. I think we're going to have to figure that out so you can get those types of revenue because you really need them. Because honestly, I really think the, the poor level of our rental stock in this city is playing a huge, huge role in the quality of renter that chooses to live in them. Well, you, you know, you I'm not going to live in that. Now, you also got to remember, too, that... Um, um, the there are some agencies, uh, both the Housing Authority and Social Housing, are supposed to request the certificate of fitness for uh, the property before they rent it. Right. And not, they're not doing it anymore. Right. Okay. And they have to do that. And, and, and y if you, um, I don't know how to say it, but you know, about 50%, 60% of the city is subsidized. Well, that's all well and good, but well, then they the should quality be, they should of be the calling us for an inspection. I will talk to them about that, and I agree with you. But and that is a big concern. But at least that's an institution we can deal with. What I'm talking about is the one and two, per, the person that owns one or two multifamilies that lets them just become totally derelict and then just chooses to rent to drug dealers. Well, and all, it's all happening all over the city. Council, I. I just want to reel it back into the budget. I understand Thank you. your concern, but I want to reel it back into the budget. And okay. Well, I appreciate again, your time. All, Thank all, you, Mr. All Chairman. All I have to do is call our office with a complaint. We we'll follow up on all our complaints. Uh, you also have that quick fix that the mayor now has uh, uh, initiated, and uh, that is very helpful. You just got to get on the computer, print it in, and. 
Well, I'm, I'm, I'm about done, but I just, I just want to, just before I'm done, say, but do you agree that there are many properties in the city that are completely derelict, that the landlords are just, just renting to I, criminals? I didn't say there were many. I said there are some. Yes, there are some, and there are also some that change hands quite a bit. Right. Uh, I've seen a lot of improvement on, 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 on some of the right. multifamilies. Uh, in my district, it's great. There, there's been quite a, f quite a bit of improvement uh, be and it basically has been uh, due to the foreclosure uh, process, unfortunately. Uh, uh, Thank out you. Outside investors have seen uh, the opportunity in Brockton because the prices are still low, and they are rehabbing these houses. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Any other questions for Mr. Tataglia? Council Sullivan. Chairman, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Tataglia. I, I, first of all, I want to thank you as Chair of the Ordinance for all the work you've been doing, working with that committee recently. I really appreciate that, sir. Thank you. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you, uh, Dr. Francis Ficero, who is just a true, uh, true dedicated public servant and just a, a, a great human being, how long had, did he serve on the, the Board of Health? Almost 30 years. The reason why I asked that, Louis, is, is a few years ago, I, I wanted to get some stuff named after John Murphy, Dr. Lingos, and I think it'd be appropriate. Um, I know the, the Paul Stadinsky building that you're in now is, is named after a true a public servant as well, but I, I really think we need to name something for Dr. Fichero. I'll agree I with don't that. know if it's a boardroom or where does the Board of Health meet? Do they meet over there or do they meet at City Hall? Uh, we meet in the GA. Do, do you have anything over in the Staninsky building that you think might be appropriate to name for Francis? Not at this time. No. Maybe we should think about that collectively, councilors. I think we need to do that because, uh, I mean, that's, that's a lot of years of... Yeah, uh, yes, he was an uh, excellent public servant. Great guy, great guy. Super Thank guy. you. We'll, Thank we'll, you. We'll, we'll work on that, Louis. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Taylor, good evening. Councilor, good uh, evening. Uh, two, two things. Mm -hmm. Could you explain to the people that are watching, the difference between a sanitary inspector and a code enforcement officer? Very simple. Sanitary inspector can inspect anything. Markets, houses, inside of houses, the whole ball of wax, anything to do with public health. Code enforcement officer, actually it's not a code enforcement officer, it's an ordinance enforcement officer. That's the correct title. They only inspect the outsides of properties. Junk car ordinance, nuisance complaint, um, rubbish and trash in the yards, etc. Not the inside of properties. They, okay. they do not inspect uh, markets. They're, they're, they're not health inspectors. They are ordinance enforcement officers. Uh, from the ordinance that was done by the uh, city council. Okay, so so the people that are watching out there, if they if they want to call your office, the telephone number is five five zero eight five eight zero seven one seven five. Correct. They can call your office and and, and and speak to your secretaries, and if they give them a, a name and address of a specific location that there's uh, debris that can be seen. Mm -hmm. from the street or maybe from their porch. Our neighbor will call up, yes. And, uh, it, and maybe you can help them out. The other question I had is when, your, when you or your yeah. people go to court and there are fines involved, how, how much... How much of the monies that, uh, okay, let's say you, you go find a, 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 a certain person for violations and it's $500. When they go to court, how much of that is reduced? Or, or sometimes you get nothing out of it. Sometimes, Does that happen? Sometimes we get nothing out of it. A lot of times we get nothing out of it. So as, you, I, as I said, what they will try to do is they will try to either um, have their case continued Let's say it's for uh, what we look for mostly, Councillor, is not fines, is compliance. We use uh, fines as a means to try to get compliance. We do take them to court with, with, uh, for the tickets, but the courts are very lenient as far as those tickets are concerned. 
A lot well, of times they dismiss them all. Yeah, but the, the bottom line is the city loses money on it. city loses money. Council, I've been, I've been before this council for the last three or four years, five years, and I've asked this council to adopt a home rule petition where the fines will become a lien on the property. And uh, until you do that, um, you're not going to have success as far as, as fines are well, concerned. Well, I sit on the ordinance and the, the chairman is beside me. Put it together and we'll talk about it. Okay? Well, there are cities and towns that already have it together. Uh, then let, let, and let again, that, that requires a uh, home rule home petition. Home rule petition from the state? Yes. I'm sure Council Dubois slash Representative Dubois will be glad to help us. Okay, Mr. Tegley, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Any other Councilor Bonds? Uh, yes, I just have one question, actually. Um, and excuse my, my having to leave. The animal inspector, last year uh, it was funded, uh, level funding, but now that person is on uh, workman's comp. What is that position, and why is it separate from, I guess, animal control? I'm, I think I'm just asking. What do you mean, separate? Well, I just would assume that anything animal related would be under animal control and not the Board of Health. Animal inspector comes under the Board of Health. Uh, they can work out of animal control, but you still have to have an animal inspector. They're in charge of all uh, rabies, a any dog bite, any dog bite, let's say a dog, dog to cat, dog to dog, um, there's a certain protocol that you have to follow as far as quarantining that dog or cat or whatever. If it's uh, uh, a dog or a cat that gets involved with an uh, unknown animal, i.e. a fox, a skunk, or whatever, now, now you're talking, there's a possibility that that uh, fox, skunk, or whatever could be rabied. And we have to quarantine those dogs. Sometimes we have to... Um, if we can get the animal that they had the fight with, um, then what we have to do is we have to, um, um, actually we have to take the, uh, to a veterinarian. We take ours down to Weymouth. They have to take the heads off and send them to the Boston lab, the state lab for uh, rabies testing. And that comes right, that comes back to us. And if that, that uh, animal is rabied, uh, uh, you better hope that your dog is up to par on their uh, rabies vaccination, right. or else they get in a could be a six-month quarantine, strict quarantine. That all comes on rabies protocol is what they call it. Comes under the Board of Health, and every year we don't have that much in the city, but it's called a barn inspection. They have to inspect like whatever, horses, et cetera, that we have in the city. Oh, livestock or anything like that that yeah. people may have? Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor. Any other questions for Mr. Tataglia, Councilors? Seeing none, good evening, Mr. Tataglia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Councilors. Thank you. Madam Clerk. The library, Keith Choquette, Acting Director. Apologize if I said that wrong. <coughs> Good evening, Councillors. Good evening, how are you? Uh, the proposed library budget will uh, meet uh, the um, needs of the public library for uh, the next year. We will be able to maintain the same level of services, including uh, maintaining uh, both of our uh, branch libraries. Uh, the library budget we requested should enable us to um, uh, fully meet all of our anticipated expenses, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Anyone have any uh, questions? I do. Council Dubois and then Council Stewart. Um, where's the library director, Mark Wolf, um, Elizabeth Marcus Wolf? Where is she? Well, I assume she's she's at, she's at her home. I mean, she's does she not work here anymore? She I don't no understand. She no longer works this. at the at the library. Yeah. Her her numbers in the budget, so it's a budget question. It's a budget yeah, question. It's a per, no matter what, she's just not president. Okay, yeah. is she working for the city? I can ask that. That's a salary. Her, na her name's in the budget. It's a budget question. Does she work at the library anymore? I don't know why we can not now fire people and not tell the public if they work there or not. Does she work in the library? Yes or no? Is it for answer. 
Well, um, I mean, you're, you're basically asking about a, a I'm just asking a, if she works there or not. A, a, a personnel. Is Michelle um, Dubois city councilor anymore? Yes right. or no? Yes, she is. At this point in time, she's still an employee of the library. She's still she is, an employee of the ex library. Exactly correct. She is still an employee of the library. She is not present here this evening and I believe is out with, should I say, I don't even know how to say, but I mean she's still an employee of the library. Administrative so, leave. Yeah, administrative leave. That's, so that's where I'm looking for. Okay. I thought it was another situation with the two chiefs and we have two, now we have two library directors. So that is not the case. <clears throat> no. No, I'm uh, I'm uh, assistant library director. Okay, it's, uh, I'm just I'm just hearing a lot of like uh, misuse of money being um, thrown at me, so I can understand, and that's that's the line of my questioning. To be to be fair, so I can understand how HR rules um, may um, disguise some of the issue that's going on. I just want to make sure that we're not paying someone so they don't have to come to work for for nothing. I mean, it's important to me to make sure that we're appropriating money um, in a way that isn't illegal, and in a way that isn't haphazard, and in a way that isn't um, unfair to the taxpayers. So if we're, if we're paying someone that um, doesn't come to work and um, is on the payroll, and if she's out sick, that's one thing, but if we're paying her not to come to work because for no reason, I just want to make sure that there's a reason that we're paying someone their salary and they don't come to work every day. So there is a reason. Is this a Maureen Cruz question? I mean, I just want to make sure that, that, that there's a legitimate reason that we're paying somebody for a year's work and they don't come to work. Is that a legit? I mean, I think that's the legitimate. We've got fiscal responsibility here on our shoulders. Right, but, but just keep in mind also, Council, they do not work for us. We do not employ people. True. We appropriate the funds to run the budget. We do not hire, nor do we fire, nor do we negotiate or whatever. We do not play that role. I know some of us would like to, but we do not. I understand, but like Channel 25, when no. they follow people I, around I, for no pay jobs and they get paid for a job they never go to. But I'm just saying, I, just I, I think, sure I, that there's I, some legal I think, support for that. I think if you want to go further with it, then you have every right to pick up the phone and talk to the mayor, and I would think that okay. he'd be able to tell you just what has transpired there. All right, I think that I, I would, is perfectly believe, yeah. fair. Yeah. I just want to make this public comment on um, camera so everybody at home and any ethics commission that comes up after this that they know okay. that I've tried to delve into this issue with paying someone for work when she doesn't come to work and having um, someone on salary and not knowing why they don't come to work and no one telling me why they don't come to work and my fiduciary responsibilities. I am going to report this to other people because I've just learned about it myself and some of the rumors that are on the street are very disparaging um, to how the city is managing of money, paying for someone to come to work that doesn't come to work. Thank you very much, I think much, the matter is being handled, though. It is being handled, Council, so thank you. Well, Any other questions? Council Stewart. Yes, taxes. I'm sorry. Uh, acting uh, Director, a question around, I, in the past, if I remember correctly, there were, uh, or there was a, a certain funding level that the library needed to maintain to be a part of the statewide or nationalwide association of libraries, which allowed us to then pursue certain grants. Are we, are we meeting that funding level with this budget? First yes. of all, am I accurate in my memory, and then are we meeting that funding level? Yes, there is uh, an incentive that comes from the Board of Library Commissioners. If we uh, increase the budget by a minimum amount, and this budget will indeed um, meet those requirements. Uh, last year, um, those funds were about $125,000 and I'm hoping um, that we should uh, qualify for um, about the, the same amount, if not a, a bit more, um, uh, in this budget for this year. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, sir. Um, this is my 10th year on the Council, my 10th budget, believe it or not, um, and I've asked this question of, of previous library directors relative to the Andrew Carnegie um, foundation uh, to try to find some additional funds for the city of Brockton and we know the history of Carnegie and his connections to Brockton and the library specifically we wouldn't wouldn't have the library without it um, and also the Melinda and Bill Gates foundation and I believe last year when I asked this question I'm pretty confident I was told that um, the Carnegie Foundation probably wouldn't be helpful to Brockton um, it doesn't really exist in that fashion anymore but that the Gates Foundation may 
potentially be beneficial? Not to put you on the spot because I know you're kind of pinch hitting right now, but is that something that you think uh, we should, we collectively, the city vis-a-vis -vis the library and the foundation should look at again to see if there's additional grant funds or some type of benefit we can get? Well, both the Carnegie Foundation and the Bill and Melinda uh, Gates Foundation have been very helpful to the library. When we did the um, building uh, project uh, several years ago, I believe we had some funds donated by uh, the Carnegie Foundation and um, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has uh, done quite a lot. With technology, help, help right? Us computers. To provide, uh, right. Com public acts computers for the, the public to use, uh, uh, providing software and technology and, and support for that. Um, I'm not really aware of anything um, that either of those is um, um, offering right now that um, I'm seeing we, we should definitely be going out and pursuing. Okay. We are pursuing some grant funds through the um, Board of Library Commissioners to um, do some uh, special services to uh, support the uh, education and to support students. Uh, in the areas of, of science and, and mathematics and develop some special programs within the library for uh, uh, teens and, uh, and uh, younger uh, students to encourage interest in, in that area. Okay. So we are pursuing some grant funds and we will try to keep our eyes open for um, uh, money that may be relevant as it comes available. Okay. And another question I had relative to the inter interlibrary loan uh, program um, with other municipalities. Are you, are you seeing that um, being used uh, pretty consistently, or is there a lull, or is it? Uh, explain. I used to do that in my college years at Boston College between the other universities, and I know Brockton does that and Randolph does it. But w is that being used quite often? Oh yes, yeah. That's a, a very integral part of the library services. Um, libraries really aren't isolated buildings anymore. We're part of the old colony library network and we're very much integrated into uh, interlibrary loan and other services that come through the library network so that's uh, very widely used okay and, and my last question would be relative to the book sale at the main library does the library uh, accept books at all times to to be offered for sale we do have a um, small uh, gift shop yep that uh, has uh, inexpensive uh, used books on sale all the time, and they do indeed uh, accept donations. Okay. Uh, and they'll determine um, what seems like um, items they, they can put up for sale. And it's a small yeah, shop, so it is, we, yeah. we can only uh, handle so many uh, donations. But uh, it's, it, it helps quite a lot generating income for the library. Okay, Thank, and, and I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, I just have one more question relative to technology. I just want to make sure, is, is Brockton Public Library uh, fully up to date relative to blocking so that somebody couldn't come in and, and maybe look at something inappropriate where a youngster may come by and happen to view it? Is there blocking in effect throughout? Well, we have software that performs uh, that uh, in the, uh, the children's room, anywhere in the, the children's room. And we have a policy um, that um, uh, although there are no uh, software filters on the adult computers, uh, people that are viewing offensive material are, can be um, cut off from um, continuing with library access to public library computers if they violate those rules. So, Because I, I, I actually first had experience, I was down there a few years ago to do genealogy research and there was some fool looking at some stuff and a young kid walked by. So I just want to make sure, so, so it's only limited right now in, in the children's section, right? By, by the Block. software, okay. uh, though the, um, the rules uh, of the library right. uh, pre prevent uh, or, you know, I, don't re allow people to just sit and view offensive material. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. That answers my question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Council. Council Bonds? Uh, yes, thank you, sir. Just one question. The library purchase of services, the electricity, can, if, I, I can't remember which one it was. I think the library got either new windows or new light fixtures or something um, at one time as a gift, but 
th both of those things I would think would directly correlate to either reduction in energy use in some way, but then there's a $10,000 increase from last year to now. Can you explain kind of what that's attributed to? Or? Well, uh, the, we do have some new windows for the West Branch Library. I okay. think that's what you're referring to. Okay. Um, and that is a um, project that uh, is, is under, underway. The windows are not yet installed. Okay. Um, the um, electricity funds for last year were a reduction from uh, the, the past years, and we anticipate um, the um, funds are going to be higher this year. So we, uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly why the, the reduction, I, I wasn't acting as director last okay. year. I think we had uh, some sort of a credit or something. I'm not quite sure exactly okay. um, how that uh, came about. But we also are looking into um, uh, trying to extend the hours at our branch libraries, which okay. would lead to some further um, uh, expenses in the electricity bill. So um, I, okay. I think that we will be able to use uh, those, those funds. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. So that explains it for me. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council. Any other questions for the uh, uh, Council, uh, Chair Council Stewart? Uh, uh, following up with, uh, to my colleague's question about computer software, blocking software for inappropriate sites. Um, so is there a reason why that software isn't installed on all computers in the library? Is it a financial licensing issue? Well, it's not a financial issue. Um, th this is a, an issue that gets discussed uh, in the library world. Um, there's, um, there's concern about uh, sort of the free access to the, the internet and um, providing people with access to the internet and um, the the software uh, works uh, well um, blocking um, offensive sites, so sometimes it can um, be overly restrictive and, and blocks sites that really there, there's nothing wrong with, with, with them. Um, just due to some sort of glitch or something, uh, the, the software can make it cumbersome uh, searching the Internet. So most of the libraries have routinely um, not blocked the adult computers, and we've had that as our policy uh, for a number of years uh, now. So it's, it's not a financial issue at all. It's just um, the, the policy that, that's been uh, set and has been established for the past several years. I, see. I, I think I understand the rationale. I couldn't understand why you had a policy against it, but not the software. But you're saying the software can be overly aggressive and not useful. I see. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Council. Any other questions for the uh, acting director? <coughs> Seeing none, appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Assessor John O'Donnell, Chairman. Good evening, John. How are you? Good evening. Good. Good. Any comment? Uh, the assessor's budget is level funded, uh, similar to the previous fiscal year. Any questions, uh, councilors, for... Uh, the assessor's office for Mr. Uh, O'Donnell. Councilor Cruz. Uh, thank you. Thank you You're for being here. Um, right now, there's one opening on the Board of Assessors, correct? Yes. But you need to have three by to, to do your job, correct? Yes. How have you been working around that right now? And the, what's the DOI gives us relief. Gives, so actually, you apply for relief, but uh, the, the, the spot is still funded, and the mayor will probably be doing something Point. soon. Pointing someone, yes. Okay. All right. Thanks. So the state has given you leeway. All right. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council. Council Sullivan. Uh, good evening, Mr. O'Donnell. Um, I don't have any questions about about your budget. It's level funded, John. I just had a, a, maybe a piece of information that you could supply because a lot of constituents call us about the abatement process, and, oh, and sure. if you could just explain that for the people that are watching because it's time sensitive. Uh, they have to file when their um, actual the third quarter bill is issued and they have 30 days from the date that is filed. So if the bill gets out on January 1st, they have to fill it first. Okay. Okay. And, and they need to contact your office? Yeah. Everything's online. Okay. All the uh, application forms. Okay. 
Okay, because I don't know if I'm the only counselor, but we, you know, we get questions a lot, counselors, on that. So thank you for that, Mr. O'Donnell. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, thank Chairman. Thank you, counselor. Any other questions, uh, for Mr. O'Donnell? Seeing none, appreciate you being here. Thank, thank you. you. Madam Clerk. Treasurer Collector, Martin Brophy, Treasurer. Evening, Councillors. Good evening, Mr. Treasurer. How are you? Good, thank you. Any comments before you begin? I uh, personally would like to thank my staff. Um, as you know, every dollar of this budget works its way through my two departments, coming in, going out. So, um, as far as the budget itself, I recently had a resignation within the department. Uh, that position was backfilled, and the vacancy was that was created has not been funded. So we'll be down to 11 clerks, myself and my assistant. Thank you. Any questions uh, for the treasurer? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Broping, how are you? We talked a little bit earlier in the year about the uh, company that does the uh, vehicle, the, the excise tax. And uh, my question to you was, um, I mean, it made it, so before the city had gone online, which the present mayor has placed a lot of those uh, functions online for different city departments, previously it, it made a lot of sense that we would contract out to an outside source that could take credit card payments and all that sort of stuff. And, and so um, I thought your conversation, conversation to me was useful in, in terms of why we're still contracting with that. Well, actually, um, so just let me just okay. pose my question or finish my thought for a second. So um, I think it would be useful because your, our conversation was useful to me and I continue to get inquiries about why we're doing it this way. If you can explain that process for those folks who are, are watching and oh, what the absolutely. financial benefits are. Um, through the city website, there is an area to pay online payments. Um, there's for real estate um, and utility is done directly through Munis. Our IT department has got it set up that um, you can put in your parcel ID, account number um, for utility, and actually see real time and pay real time 24-7, 365 days a year. Um, as far as motor vehicle excise, we do have a deputy collector that we deal with. Um, that's Kelly and Ryan. There is a link to their website that um, will allow a person to pay their excise bill. They are more restrictive in what information needs to go in. You need more information than what the city, through Munis, what you need to pay the bill. Um, and, and that's where you, you need to have your registration, you need your, your license number. There's certain criteria so that you're pulling up the correct bill. And those are all done through the city website. You can use a credit card or an e-check on all the sites. So we're, we're contracting with uh, Ryan Kelly, right? Kelly and Ryan. Kelly and Ryan. Um, so my impression, based on our conversation, was for a number of reasons that it's actually cost-effective to do so. And Absolutely cost-effective. So can you just talk through why we're making that choice? Um, Kelly and Ryan is one of the best in the business uh, the 14 years that I've been here. Um, they basically send out the bills. We'll do um, collection as well. but. Once a bill has gone past due and gone beyond a demand phase, an actual warrant is mailed out. Uh, and after a, if the warrant goes past due, then is a service warrant. They'll actually hire a constable that will serve a warrant directly to the house of the person. After that, if the bill goes unpaid, they will go to the registry and mark it at the registry. In which case, when you try and renew your license or renew your registration, that'll pop up and it'll actually you need to be paid before you can renew your registration. If I had to do that personally with the amount of bills we have for excise, I would probably need a staff of about 10 because I'd actually, we would physically have to bring all that information to the registry. I'd actually have to hire the constables myself to actually serve those warrants. Okay, that was my, uh, and then the, uh, can you talk more about the payment structure? So uh, what monies are we collecting directly from um, what to do and what is the, the company collecting? As far as excise? Correct. Basically, when a current bill goes out, we'll collect it. 
Uh, some people will actually go to the deputy collector. We have a, a small office downstairs where, you know, they, they have a deputy collector here. Um, if the person pays it there, all the money from the tax itself will come to the city. Once the demand goes out, again, we can still collect it in the office. It's when it hits the warrant phase, or the, yes, the warrant phase, that Kelly and Ryan, it's out of the, my hands as collector and is given to the deputy collector to collect. And they, but they don't collect the full amount, do they? They will collect the full amount, the demand, interest, the warrant, and I think there's a service, the mailing, they put on a fee themselves. So at that point, they keep their own fee and everything else comes to the city. Okay, so the demand, the tax, the interest will come to the city. I see. So, so they, uh, they apply their own fee yeah, for the they, process, they, but the rest of the revenue comes to the city. The deeper it gets as past due, the fees, that's where they can get some of the money. And the, the $20 mark at the registry will actually be registry funds. Okay. And then one last question specifically for the budget, which and maybe I missed it. So we um, charge them a uh, rental fee, right? Yeah, the little space, the, it's almost a closet, basically, that this person works in. Uh, they pay $100 a month rent. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Useful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Councillor. Councillor Cruz. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brophy. Uh, Treasurer of Medicare tax, mm -hmm. we pay out. Yes. Is that deducted from people's salaries, or it's, what is that money? That's actually the city's portion. Um, with Medicare tax, it's paid 50% by employee, 50% by employer. Oh, okay, so that's what so, we pay out. Yes, that's the city's portion of it. And it's up about uh, four, uh, $400,000 this year? Yeah, let, usually annually, that was something I've always increased every year, uh, is, is older employees who weren't paying into Medicare retire, the new ones come on board and will stop paying. So it's usually increased every year. This current year, uh, it actually went down a little, and we had to move <coughs> money in. So we're trying to plan ahead and figure uh, we'll, we'll budget a little higher than what we know. So. And then under Treasurer's Goods and Supplies, registry deeds, what is that? What, what do you, you have to pay over there? We actually, when we do a, hack, a tax taking, yep. the $77 fee per PASA that we do. Um, and if someone pays it off, we then have to pay a $77 redemption fee. <coughs> Um, now, those are added to the account when it goes into tax titles. So as we do it, we pay ahead, you know. So we have to pay that 42.5, but essentially we're getting that back eventually through the yes. process. Yes. Okay. I, I thought that, but I... Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Council. Councilor Barnes. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Just a question. Looking at the um, overtime, the department requested 4,300 or so, but yep. the mayor's recommendation... Correct. Since, since they're four times. not filling a position, they're increasing my overtime because I'd never survive without it. Oh, okay, so that's where that money came from. Okay. And um, just, I, if I could just have just a little bit of, of time. So the ex, particularly excise tax, mm -hmm. you said that Kelly Ryan, they send out, do they send out the first notice or do they start sending they send out, out like the subsequent? No, I mean, the Registry of Motor Vehicles will give a, put out a file. It's all based from the Registry of Motor Vehicles. So on January 1st, the vehicle that is owned uh, in a calendar year. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, that is really our largest commitment. It's usually around 55, 56,000 bills okay. that'll go out. They'll do all the printing and mailing. As part of the contract, it's printing and mailing. The city actually will cover the, the cost of mailing, but since they do uh, postal um, software, it's much cheaper than us putting a stamp on it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So they do all the mailing for us, for those bills. So again, the bill comes from the registry okay. and is then mailed out. Okay, because I'm not going to um, announce how I know this, but I, I know that some people don't get their first bills. And the first bill that they get, I've heard it from constituents, the first bill they get has the warrant and the demand, and it's usually... Council, there's bills, every bill that we send out, there's a stack of return mail that comes here, comes back. I mean, every bill, whether it be real estate, utility, excise. We get return mail for every bill. Return undeliverable or return? Return undeliverable. Oh, well, then that makes sense. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. No, sir, Council? Yes, thank you, Mr. Right, Council. Any other uh, questions for uh, Mr. Brophy at this point, Councilors? All right, no. seeing none on that uh, particular <coughs> item, we go to the, uh, the next one, Madam Clerk.
Treasurer's Debt Service, Mine Brophy Treasurer. Evening Open. again, Councillors. <laughs> what was that? I said good evening again. Good evening. <laughs> nice to see you. This, of course, is the city what um, general fund money that has been bonded and uh, is the true debt of the city for any projects that we've done. Questions, Councillors? Seeing that. Good evening. Thank you. Nice to see you. Next item, Madam Clerk. Personnel, Maureen Cruz, Director. Good evening, Councillors. Good, Good evening. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, just a quick comment. As you can see, the initial department request for both uh, health and dental was much higher than what is being recommended by the mayor. That's because the budget was submitted in March using March headcounts and based off the layoffs in the school department and the cuts on the city side, the mayor and the CFO made a recommendation to cut that. So that's why there is a decrease in what I requested and what was budgeted. Very good, thank you. Council is quite Council Stewart. Question, thank you. Hello, Ms. Cruz, how are you? Good, how are you? Uh, so I had a question around um, PD for departments. So during that whole water debacle, uh, what we learned was that a number of staff members hadn't been uh, you know, trained in different ways or th there was a, a little lack of focus on professional development. And I think we talked a little bit about who, who should take ownership of making certain that staff, there's a professional development plan in place. Um, and I thought that, that at that time that that would fall somewhat on the, um, the personnel department, which is the human resources department. But I'm not seeing anything in the budget that indicates a significant increase in professional development. So I'm just trying to understand wh what's happening and who's doing that work within well, the city. There is some professional development <coughs> going on between the laborers union. They have a uh, an office in Hopkinton, and they have some professional development that they will offer us through the laborers union free of charge. So we are working with them at this point to offer some programs and we are being much more proactive at this point with Mr. Rowley and the union. I see. For that particular... That's uh, a large group. That is um, six groups. I see. Okay. Um, that's great. So maybe I'll ask the different... I mean, I, I think that's just crucial that we, uh, you know... Well, the other... The, uh, it, it is crucial. But when we're trying to keep people in jobs, it's also a budget issue that, you know, we don't have the additional funds to include in the budget. Right, I can imagine. Um, but also people being able to do their jobs well is important too, right, in terms of that additional training. So, okay, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Council. Any other, Council Sullivan? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Ms. Cruz. Um, I don't have any questions on your budget. I asked this question every year, Maureen, and I'll ask it <laughs> this year as well. Um, could you just explain to me again if, if a retiree for the city of Brockton passes away but the surviving spouse still has the insurance, not, not the pension, but just the insurance, is there a way for Brockton to do an automatic withdrawal so that that widow or widower doesn't have to cut a check every month? We can't do an automatic withdrawal, but we are working on getting a billing system in place through Munis and ITC so at least they would receive a monthly bill. They'll get a bill every month, but they still have to cut a manual check. Right. Why, why couldn't we do an automatic withdrawal, though, if the widow or a widow set it up? It's just... I don't believe we're set up through Munis to be able to do <coughs> through, that. Through Munis. I believe that's correct, sir. Could, could we maybe look into that? I've just a couple different people um, have asked me that. Some of these elderly women have asked me, and I, I never have an answer for them. So that would be great. <coughs> Thank you for what you do, Maureen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, Council. Any other questions for uh, our personnel director, Councillors? Seeing none. Good evening. Thank you. Thank Good you evening. for being Thank here. You. Appreciate it. Madam Clerk. Police, John Crowley, Chief. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. You're here for budget number one. I am. Good luck. Thank You'll be you. fine. Nice to see you. Thank you. Any presentation, some of you, any remarks before you take any no, questions? No? Nope. Ready to take questions? You ready to take questions? Um, 
Yes. Okay. All right. Whatever you want to do, Chief. Councilors? I have a question. Councilor for Stewart. Chief. Hi, hi, Chief. How are you? Um, the, so there's a new, um, maybe we appropriated this money as the city council. I don't remember specifically, but there, there's a new, um, I guess, grant program for officers to patrol these um, traffic intersections that are, I guess, traffic intersections of concern around safety. Um, is that correct? Because I couldn't find what that, where it's that the, was in the budget. The step grant is in the traffic commission budget. It's in the traffic commission budget. Okay, great. I have questions about that later. I, I, the reason I was made uh, reminded of this was I was pulled over uh, recently. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> <laughs> because, <riding around>. I, <laughs> because I made a turn off of um, Main Street onto Oak Street, and I guess I turned into that breakdown lane too early where it didn't exist. Um, and uh, the police officer was very professional and informed me why I was pulled over. So I, it was nice to know that um, that money is, is working, I guess, and wanted to make sure. And I, just, I, I didn't see it in your budget, and I didn't know what that amount was, and, and so I'll ask when the, when the traffic commission comes up. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome, thank you. Councilor. Councilor Bonds? Yes. Uh, Chief, again, my, my reference is just the book from last year. So in overtime. Yes. It's the same amount that was requested last year, but then, you know, the beginning of the, the fiscal year, uh, first quarter into second, half in the second quarter, the department came back for several thousands, hundreds of dollars more. So is this going to be enough this year, or are you anticipating having to come back again with, with some of the new changes or any other kind of changes that are going to be happening? Last year, our request was for 635000 we had to come back before the mm -hmm. council for an additional request um, to bring us up to 935,000. This year, the request is for this 900, 900 right. 352, and in the hopes that that'll level fund our overtime and be enough. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Councilor Cruz. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, separation costs. This past year looks like actuals to uh, well. 2014 actual was 135. Uh, you're carrying 100. Uh, you, how many do you have? Many officers you're expecting to retire this year? Anybody? Generally, you and the fire department kind of know ahead of time. Do you know how many uh, will be planning on leaving? I I speculate three, but I you know it all depends. Yeah, I know I'm not trying to hold you to that, but generally, you know, like I say, the fire and the police generally have an idea. Now. A couple of lines below that is unused sick time, 85,595. I always thought part of the separation cost was when people took their unused sick time as and vacation time, that kind of constituted the separation cost. What is the 85,595 of unused sick time in the budget? Sick leave bank. Sick, sick, it's a sick leave incentive to not use it. Yes. It's a contractual item. So that doesn't end up as part of the separation costs? No. So what constitutes the separation costs? I don't know if you want Captain. Uh, it could be sick time. If you could just do it as a microphone for the people at home. I'm sorry, Captain. The, the sick leave incentive was something that was put into the contracts uh, several years ago. That's for active members. They go the whole year without calling in sick. <clears throat> they get an incentive stipend. And then the separation cost is whatever time you have accrued when you leave that you, you get paid for. Okay. Some so of that could be sick time also. Uh, also. So that 85,595 is an, an active duty police that's, officer who uses that, no that, sick time? That's people, that active police officers, uh, I guess it's paid at the end of... Uh, usually at the end of January, for example, uh, the, the checks, they would have got a ch check for it at the end of January for uh, 2014 for not calling in sick for the year. Okay. Um, and then the under purchase of services, I just don't know what this is. There's a line, Department EQRL. Uh, it's about fourth or fifth downs. Hundred thousand dollars, hundred nine eighty-two. I just don't know what that is. Just wondering what that is. Equipment repair. Okay. Well, that kind of leads me then to my question. Um, uh, patrol cars. I'll just save our president his uh, 
since he can't ask you questions from up there. Thank where, you. where are we on? Uh, do you have you have you would requested 320 for vehicles and there's zero in here. Uh, where, how are your vehicles and are you going to make it through the year with what you have? We're hoping that we're going to need vehicles eventually and we're speaking in the mayor's office to try to make some arrangements. Because right now we're, we're carrying zero dollars for, yes. for vehicles but uh, I mean we've talked before and again the, the uh, chairman usually would be the one asking this but I mean uh, we'd love to see where you're rolling. How many vehicles do, do we have? Total vehicles? Yeah. I would patrol actually patrol, patrol in the city roughly 30. 30 and we should probably be replacing f five a year and rolling those over. Yes. Um, but we, we're carrying zero again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, Councilor Sullivan. Thank you. Good evening, Chief. How are you good, tonight? Good evening. Thank you. Um, Chief, in terms of the overtime, again, just to kind of piggyback on Councilor Barnes, and I know we, we, we went through it in three months last year. Yes. Y your request was 800,352, and the mayor bumped <coughs> it up by 100 grand yes. to 900. Could you explain why it was a $100,000 increase? To my knowledge, it, it was increased to bring us more to where they feel we need to be, comparable to this year. We ended up at 935,000 for physical 15, for physical 16. We're looking for that 900 to bring us close to where we were this year. But, but you as the department head thought it should be 800,000, right? Yes. Okay. Do, do you expect, and you've been on the force a long time, Chief, do you expect that last year's overtime spending could be replicated again this year? I'm hoping not. Obviously. <laughs> um, okay, so I got definitely got a question on that one. And then, then in terms of the, um, and I asked this of pre previous chiefs as well, um, in terms of the, the um, and I met you a long time ago on the traffic commission, John, so in terms of the, the police that are dedicated to traffic, is, is that still uh, at full force? Is it, yes. Is it still working on a, on a daily basis? Yes. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, and then in terms of, and again, we're not talking about a person or anything personnel, in terms of code enforcement, we had this when you came before us before, is that, is that not necessarily position, but is that duty and responsibility being handled every day by Brockton PD? Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Councilor. Councilor DiNapoli. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Chief. Good evening, Councilor. Uh, my question was asked about the uh, patrol cars and the overtime. Okay. So You're I'm welcome. all set. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Dubois. Thank you so much. Hi, Chief. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Can you tell me where, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm just opening up to the budget right now, where are the motorcycle leases, the, motor, the mythical motorcycles? solve all the city's crime. Where are those? Where are those in the budget? That's what I'm wondering. Are we going to keep them or are we not going to keep them? Because are we going to buy them outright or are we going to continue that, leasing? That is under uh, police purchase of service. Uh, okay. 527300, Department Five, two, Equipment seven. Rental Lease. I got it. I got it. So it was 66 in... Well, we rented something else, so it's going to be around $100,000. So we're, how, many, how many motorcycles are we going to lease? We have is it six or eight. Eight. Okay, so the ones we're just on like a three-year lease period or something like that? Yeah, we, we renew it yearly. Uh, we have six on lease. We own, we own two. So the six, we, re, we lease six motorcycles. Okay, great. And then um, I'm sorry to ask these difficult questions. It's just that my constituents have a lot of questions. And they call me every day and ask me all these questions. So I wouldn't be a very good representative if I didn't ask the questions that they ask me. And that is, we had the detail driving the mayor around. And so I've been told by residents who may or may not know what they're talking about that whenever there was a police officer driving the mayor around, that means that his shift had to be filled with overtime costs, and that's why our overtime costs were so high. Is that accurate? It is not. Okay, great. Can you explain to me how that is all funded? It's funded. It's, uh, right now it's a patrolman on the 4 to 12 shift. He's carrying a special detail on his shift 
and his duties are during those hours to be in the executive protection unit. From four? Four in the afternoon till midnight. So, so who, who, is, who drives the mayor earlier than that? He is a, um, on a special detail from his assignment. He does an eight-hour shift, and it depends on. Oh, okay, so this needed. this this police officer, his typical shift is, shift is four to twelve. For attendance purposes, yes. But he's on a a flex, so as long as he works the hours he's supposed to work, he's covering this this four to twelve time period. And then, who is the officer that actually fills the like? Who's who's defending the city from four to twelve he's, he's when the crime is happening? He's carried special detail on that shift. It would only create overtime if staffing levels went below the minimum staffing level. Okay, so he's assigned to the 4 to 12 shift, yes. but he works his hours outside because he's a special detail or special whatever, which is fine. That makes sense to me. You have to have that attendance to figure it out. But he's one of the people that are slated to be working from 4 to 12 protecting the city. And what is the, what is the number of officers that we have to have on 4 to 12? Ten officers. So if the number goes below 10 officers, then you have to call in someone for overtime? Yes. How can I find out how often that happened last year? I can try to look that up for you. I would love that. Thank you so much. I just have so many constituents that are engaged and really want to know what's happening. That's so fun. I appreciate yep. your, your information. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, uh, Council. Uh, do I have any other, uh, before I go back to um, Council Cruz for follow-up, any other councils that want to? Go back to Council Cruz for a follow-up. Thank you. Just one question I forgot, and it's really for Jay. Is the, the last lieutenant, are we still funding that through the schools, still paying for that, right, school department? Yes, I think so. I, I, I'd have to check for sure, but I think there's still one guy being paid by the school department. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure of that because that was a deal at the time. So, okay, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Captain. <coughs> and then a uh, follow-up, Councillor Councillor Barnes. Thank you. Just just one more. Just looking at the polls um, line item, it went up 10,000 from the actual to requested. It, is, was that in anticipation for the last special election or I something? I believe it went up, up $5,000 as a result of a collective bargaining and the cost oh. to the pay the offices was oh. higher. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. You all set, Councillor? And a follow-up, Councilor Sullivan? I just had two, if I could, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chief, just to follow up on Councilor State Rep. Dubois, in terms of the executive detail, the police officer's dedicated protection of the, the chief executive, the mayor, that's only one person, or when that shifts over, a new cop fills in that position? It's one person with him. There's three other people that do it. Um, it's like a rotating? A rotating. Between three people? Right, because you can't expect one person to be available at all times. Um, and is it 24 hours or is it just during the clock of the city halls open? It's when, when it's deemed to be needed. Okay, okay. My last question is, is when the new officers that we just approved um, came before us, and that was great, and they were all very impressive, I was surprised because they mentioned <coughs> that they're having training done in Randolph. Yes. Uh, is that a new event? Because that, that hadn't happened in the past. They just recently opened in Randolph the Mass Criminal Justice Training Council Academy there. Chief so Pace is, is doing that? Um, I'm not sure who's okay. in charge of that over there. Okay, but that's new. It's not affiliated with the police department. No, it's but it's based in Randolph yes. there. Yes. And that's new, huh? Yes. And does is that, is that help us because it's more timely? It, well, it helps us because it's local. It's um, close, yeah. The problem is when we try to put people on... These academies won't reserve spots. We have to have our people chosen and selected the day we call them. So, in other words, we can't anticipate hiring in November and calling and saying, hey, we're going to hire nine people in November. Can you save us nine spots? We have to have those people ready when we call, and it's whatever available academy is available has openings. So we were lucky that it was Randolph. Um, it could be West Boylston. It could have been Plymouth. Yeah. Um, Okay. We were so fortunate that, that it was Randolph. That lucked out. And my last question, Chief, is, and, I, and this is just for educational purposes, but, but the late Fred Flamini, who was Brockton Fire, told me that uh, when you go to the range on a regular basis, you need to get tested for lead poisoning. I had never thought of that. So when the, when the officers go to Holbrook to shoot, do, do they, do they, is that it within their contract that they have to get tested for, for health and safety for, for lead poisoning? No. It's not? Mm. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor. Any other? Uh, just point of, point of information, Council Mr. Chairperson, with the new um, training facility in Randolph. The, the actually the person who manages that program program is a Brockton resident. Just for point of information. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any other uh, any other questions, uh, Councilors, for for the chief? Seeing none. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Good luck, Madam Clerk. Traffic Commission, Captain John DeBerry. I'm uh, Captain Williamson. I'm going to be submitting for Captain DeBerry tonight in a, an event he had to attend. Uh, traffic Commission is pretty straightforward. There's no salaries. Uh, total budget uh, request is about 241000 uh, Most of that is for line painting and replacing signs. Near the end. And that's all. Okay. Ready for questions. Council Rodriguez and then Council Dubois. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Captain. Um, Captain, where exactly are the, um, the signage that constituents actually um, come before the traffic commission on a regular basis to ask for? Where exactly in the budget is Wh the... Which line item for, for signs? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it says uh, traffic line. It's 553-800. Uh, it's, uh, it's almost down the bottom of the page. 155000 Okay. That's also for line painting. That, that 155000 It's paid to oh. line painting crews. <laughs> so... Between line painting and the general signage in the sense, I know, I know Patty is here, so maybe she probably has a little more on that information. What is the ratio between line painting and, the, and what we spend in signage? And the reason why I'm asking is that uh, as the uh, chairman and I sat on the on traffic commission last year, and I continue to be on the commission with, uh, with uh, Council Azak, and I know Councilor uh, DiNapoli, constantly shows up there and so do uh, the rest of the councillors here but there's not a single day that goes by that a citizen does not show up at the at the traffic commission meeting uh, asking or looking for some sort of signage for public safety in this community so I know we do the si the the lines but I don't think we had asked actually asked the uh, the captain to put in a little bit more money into the um, into traffic commission so we would have a little bit more to be able to satisfy the needs of the uh, of the taxpayers in this community. So, do you know what the ratio is between I, what is I, spent on science and I don't. And but I was the traffic commission before Captain DeBerry, and the prices might have gone up. But I, I seem to recall that the line painting was over 100,000. Uh, this line now is 155, so it's probably about 120,000 for the line painting, <clears throat> and probably the rest is for the <clears throat> signs and and uh, this, you know that. That's the best guess I have. Well, thank you, Captain. And Mr. Chairman, uh, just as a, a point to my fellow councillors, if you could look favorable in this particular line item, because, again, not a day goes by on this particular commission that we're not questioned or asked by a constituent for, uh, for signage. So if we need to cut something, please stay away from that budget item. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dubois. Hello, Captain. Hello. Can I, I have a question. When and how much might it cost to get that um, guardrail that's like eight feet out of the ground through like a, a snow heave and the plow hitting it on North Cary and Ames Street fixed? Uh, it's I been reported a million times. I can't give you a time frame. I do know that that's been an issue replacing the guardrails. Uh, the Captain... The Barry did request an additional thirty-one thousand right. for 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 re replacement of the guardrails. So I guess my question is like, so the and way it's ha the way have you seen this one? Y yes. Great. So there's one there, and there's one where the old Christos was over in Ward Five. I've gotten two complaints and pictures sent to me, and the one in Ward Six, I get uh, a photograph of like every five days from a constituent. So he keeps saying, <laughs> "Why isn't it fixed? Why isn't it fixed?" So will you would like do you know like because you were a traffic commissioner for a while, is it a process of yeah. fixing it or literally replacing the whole thing? But my experience, the problem with the guardrails is. Uh, uh, when, we ha when we have an accident involving a guardrail and we have a vehicle that has insurance, we go after the insurance company. Right. The problem is when you get these hit and runs, well, where you don't was, know who hit it. This was a plow. 
Could we get it from the plow oh, that's company? That's a separate. Uh, if these are both the two I'm talking about were both instances that when the 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 city was pushing snow onto these corners and when the snow melted, the guardrail was like literally the cement that is hold that should be like five feet under the ground is above the ground because you can see where maybe the plow pushed in the snow and pushed it up and like it wasn't an accident. It was a guard. It was like yeah, a that, plow. Yeah, that's probably a whole different process uh, that I personally am not familiar with. Okay. With, usually, when you, I know these plows have to have insurance. Sounds to me like we didn't discover it for a while. No, I, not until everything so, melted. Right. So I guess maybe I'll call uh, the DPW and the solicitor's office, and then call over to Captain DeBerry and see if it's on the list. I mean, I've called the traffic commissioner about it a bunch of times, so it's got to be somewhere out there. On some list somewhere, right? I mean, right, have you heard right. about these two already? I didn't hear about it, but I did see it. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Captain. Uh, going back to what Councilor uh, Rodriguez was asking, on the line painting, is that mostly crosswalks? It's the crosswalks, the center lines, the stop lines, uh, where, you know, where they actually paint the stop signs on the pavement. And after all the tragedies we had this year, didn't we pick up some grant money towards crosswalks and, and all? Excuse me. Yes. Is that the 500000 Uh Yeah, there was a mass DOT grant. Uh, I believe it was 500000 of which 100000 goes to engineering costs. Which would be? Which would be? I'm not too familiar with the grant. Um, so, like, what? I mean, is, is it for crosswalks? Is it for? Not really. Um, the Mass DOT is being very specific as to what it can be used for. Right now, they're still in the discovery process. Captain DeBarry, Deputy Fire Chief Kevin Gallagher, and DPW Commissioner Larry Raleigh are all working with Mass DOT and with the engineers um, to develop how best to use the money. Um, the first go around. Some of the things that the traffic commission members wanted to do um, were a no-go. So what is the DOT pushing for with yeah. those, you know? One of the things that they would like to see yeah. is um, the traffic signal fixed. Unfortunately, to fix a traffic signal once you start it, you have to bring it completely up to code, which is about a million dollars and then a $400,000 grant. The math doesn't work. So they're going to have to change their... Uh, yes. DOT is going to have to change what they're looking for. Yes, and they're still in, in the negotiating stages as to what best to use the money for for the city. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, uh, Councillor Councilor Cruz. Councillor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Councilor Chair. Councillor Azak. Good evening, Councillor uh, Captain Williamson. Um, Good evening. Uh, sir, I'm, I, uh, I have a line item. Oh, I'm getting tired. Uh, 531200. If we swing across it, in 2015, there was a 44,200, and it was recommended for 16 of 75,262, and then it was reduced to 55,262. Was that the money? For, that was money for the guardrails, is that correct? That, that, that increase was a request for, to replace guardrails. That's correct. It, it, was, it was reduced by... Uh, to, the request was reduced. It, it, right. Overall, it's 11,000 more than... More than the, the previous before. year. Yes. Yes, but so, but they they did ask for more money, and like you said before, we uh, we have a I guess we have a problem of collecting now a lot of a lot of the uh, plowing this year, uh, the front end loaders tore up Council Dubois' uh, uh, guardrail when they put the snow in, on, in that gentleman's yard, because I I mean I plow and I go around the city and I I see what these guys are doing. Now, can't we get uh, De Lorenzo to pay? I don't know if he did that or not. Can't we make him pay for that? Yeah, I, I believe so. It's it's not something they have a lot of experience with. So that's why I, I'm, okay. why I didn't really comment on it. But these Maybe plows all have to have insurance. So No, I, I, un I understand that. But, I mean, uh, a lot of it was done with the snow. I mean, it was done in the state highways when they... I, th I mean, you can't see the snow when it's four feet high. You can't see the guardrail right. when it's buried. And accidents do happen. Right. That's but, you right. know, we as a city uh, can't replace all these guardrails that are broken. 
I mean, we just don't have that, the money. That, that, that's correct. Uh, you know, that's why he's requesting more money. Even it's, even this is probably not going to be enough. Maybe you know what I'll do is maybe Patty, I'll call you in the morning. We'll send a letter out to the to the contractors. Thank you, uh, Captain, for that information. Thank, thank you. you, thank Mr. you, Councilor Chair. Councilor Stewart, and then Councilor Isaac. Uh, uh, Captain, so my question around the, the the grants and the monitoring of I guess hot traffic spots in the city. Where is that money showing up in the budget? Uh, th that. Any grant is not going to show up in the budget, whether it's for traffic or any other police staffing. Uh, it's, a, it's something that gets a different line item. Uh, so I, I, don't have the, I, didn't, I don't have any of the grant stuff in front of me. Oh, I see. I wasn't. So none of the grant items that we, up, that we approve show up in the city's? No, that's, in a, that's separate from the budget. So where does the money, how is the money accounted for? Like where is it sitting? Well, if it's something that we can access and view, it's just it's not presented here today. Oh. Okay, thank you. It's, it's something that we do keep track of. Okay. Well, I'd be interested in knowing what, what that, I can't remember the, the council yeah. approving that amount. So I'm just curious <coughs> what, um, what the amount is and what intersections it, it covers in the city. If that's something you can let I'm me sorry, know. I'm sorry, what was that again? So I just did not remember the city council accepting that that monies. How much? How much is it for? And who is it from? You may not. What, what's the title? Do you know? I, it, All right, we can I, do this I, offline. I can get that information to you. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you, Councilor Councilor Isaac. No. Good evening, Captain. Good evening. I'm going to go back to the um, line painting uh, line item. Oh. The line painting, that 100000 you said approximately cost about 100000 Uh Well, when I was traffic commissioner a couple of years ago, it ran about, a, you know, low hundreds. No problem. Now, is that done by city employees? No, that's, 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 that's put out to bid, and I believe Markings Inc. Uh, Markings Inc. out of Pembroke, uh, out of Pembroke. they've held the contract for several years, usually the low bidder. Now, there's, I, and I'm asking, Pembroke. Uh, they're out of Pembroke. Now, um, I've seen in the um, last few days, actually, there's a crew that actually follows the line painters when they're painting. That's correct? right. And that's, is that just a regular patrol? Yeah. That is a detail. That's the public safety line item. Of, that, that, the, that pays for the pl public safety, uh, I don't know. pays for the police detail, guardrails. So it's there's in there with the more, guardrails? Right. Okay. Now, have, have you thought about actually having city employees do the line painting, doing it in-house, or? Well, it's something that's put out to bid. I, I, I don't even know of a company in Brockton that's bid on it. No, th it isn't something that would be done, for example, the uh, DPW, or? I, I don't think they have that kind of equipment. They don't have that kind of equipment. Also, it's an equipment question. Yes. Having yeah. type of equipment. Okay, very good. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Chairman, if I could, point of information to, uh, to Councillor uh, Azek, uh, surely that, that would have to be a bargain uh, because that would be a change of scope of work. So that would have to be bargained within the next contract if, if that was to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for the uh, Captain in regards to Traffic Commission? Seeing none. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Veteran Services, David Farrell, Director. Mr. Farrell, how are you? Uh, good evening, Mr. President. And, uh, good evening, Councillors. Thank you uh, for attending the Memorial Day Parade. It's a wonderful event. Um, this year's budget uh, request isn't too different from last year's. Uh, I anticipate uh, level funding of uh, veterans' cash benefits. And uh, here, my thanks for past support and hope you'll uh, continue to support veteran services to the degree you have. Thank you. Councilor Dubois. Thank you. I think you do a wonderful job. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a very important job and I appreciate it. And I'm wondering um, what, what role might your office have in the, um, the tax break that the city council passed into the ordinances to allow veterans on like a, a lottery system to volunteer for the city and get a certain amount of money off their taxes. I think we passed that like three years ago and I don't know if it's been implemented yet, but do you know if it has or do you have a role in that? Yes, uh, veterans is the other half. Uh, there are two sides to that coin. One is through the Council on Aging and I think the 
I can't really speak for them, right. but I, I believe the cap on it is $750. The one through the Veteran Services Department, uh, working with the assessors, is uh, $1,000. And uh, yes, it is up and running. Uh, we've had one veteran complete the uh, 111 hours and qualify for the $1,000. And we're working on getting uh, additional veterans, you know. Uh, How many veterans can do it each year? 30. Okay, 30. so when do they have to apply? <coughs> well. Uh, I'm taking applications now. I have about uh, eight that uh, I'm, you know, juggling to get. The type of work available to them right now is only Monday through Friday uh, in the uh, Brockton Emergency Management Office, and there's really only room for one one person to be volunteering at a time. Uh, okay. So they have to be available and. Uh, so there aren't other. I would think that all the departments, being so short staffed, would be clamoring, saying, "Give me one of those 30 people." N no. There, or there are prohibitions, I think, uh, through uh, personnel and um, positions that may have been eliminated or uh, are specifically designated as uh, full-time or part-time work in the city that really can't be included in this work-off. Because it, what's this so has to be truly volunteer. Uh, uh, work uh, or uh, services that would not be provided by a, someone who was paid for. You know, that, you know what's so great about having this double hat of city councilor and state representative is that I get to go to East Bridgewater and West Bridgewater town halls quite often now, and they have this robust program where they literally, I meet the same two, and I hope no one gets offended, little old ladies, beautiful ladies, every Friday when I go, and they're working their volunteer hours, and they have these volunteers really integrated through every single department. So is this something that like maybe I should talk to the town administrator there and bring how they do it back or is this a problem that's just to Brockton because I would think that we could if we're a city we could be doing even more than a little town is doing. Well I, I think um, as I say uh, the Council on Aging is probably able to do that because they have a substantial number of individuals who are volunteers supporting Council on Aging. Uh, oh, we, these people are in the assessor's department. Like, I walk in and these ladies are literally staffing the assessor's office when I walk in. Like, that is their sure. normal shift. But in Brockton, we're not able to do that yet. So that might be something I need to look into with, with um, the mayor's office, or where do you think I should look into that, it, that prohibition that we're facing here? I'm, I'm not sure. Well, the state representative, I think you should probably <laughs> investigate okay. that one. I, I really don't know where you could start on that. But well, mayor's office is a good starting point. Okay, great. So then for nothing else, any veteran back at home that wants to contact try to alleviate $1,000 of their uh, property tax bill and is struggling should contact yes. you um, at the veteran's office, right? Yes, that's correct. Thank you so much. You're Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Any, uh, any other questions for J Mr. Thank Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Farrell. Good evening, um, Council thank Council. you for all that you do, thank David, you. And, and, uh, and, and it runs the gamut from putting up the signs that you've done for the veterans that gave the ultimate sacrifice. You've done yeoman's work on that, and I personally thank you for that, to the parades. Uh, and at the last parade, um, you stated something that I thought was great to hear. You welcomed and invited anybody to come down to the War Memorial to take <coughs> a tour. I mean, it's a gym in the city. Yes, it is. Uh, and I, I thought that was so refreshing to hear because it, it really is. So I want to thank you for, for throwing that out there. I know it was on TV as well. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you, I don't have any, I wish we had a million dollars more to give you on this. Um, but I ask you this every year. Um, how many currently uh, vets are you working with right now um, through your office? Well, uh, if you're asking about who received this benefit, the cash benefit, uh, in the course of a year, I deal with 300 veterans, 300. roughly. Uh, the fixed amount from month to month is about 150 uh, checks per month. But there's such transience and in and out on the program that to people moving into the community, people moving out, uh, that it, the total number in a, in a one year, a 12 month period are 300 cases. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank and, you. And, and if I could add that uh, the state does reimburse us for these expenses, and we're at about 76.5% reimbursement rate right now. Uh, so we're paying about 230000 of this okay. 950 is coming out of the Brockton General Fund. That's great. Thank you. And, and through you, Mr. Chair, um, sure. I, I, I think collectively as a council, the, the Veteran and Senior Citizen Volunteer Workoff Program that this council passed. Um, was was not to have a li limited scope on volunteerism. So I think collectively all 11 of us uh, should do a resolve to bring the mayor in because um, when I brought this forward, I mirrored other communities 
much like Councillor State Rep. Dubois just said, uh, that use this on a regular basis. And that's why we put the number so high under Mass General Law. So maybe right. when budget's all done, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Chair, we should look at that uh, because that's why it's on the books. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sullivan. Any other questions? Councillor Bonds. I actually have one. Yes, sir. Um, thank you very much, too, for um, taking care of our veterans in the city. Has there, I'm not sure if you know, just with the War Memorial Building in general, I remember there was some discussion at one time about possibly getting like a building manager or some kind of um, a, a building coordinator with, with you know, the, um, when, well, when emergency, when emergency services got there and then it became more, um, more used. Certainly. Is that kind of still in the working or is anybody talking about that? Again? Well, I believe the trustees are talking about it. Yes. Okay. I believe the trustees are working on a, a plan, uh, the scope of which I'm not, I'm not too familiar with, but uh, they are working and, and bringing this issue to the mayor's attention and looking for uh, possibly a long-term uh, manager of the building, you know, that would to keep it out of kind of the uh, uh, building superintendent's uh, right. purview, you know, something that would devote itself to uh, other activities besides just those uh, for veterans. Right, right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you okay. for that update. Point of information on that, Mr. Oh, Chairman. That would be a different budget. There is a War Memorial Building budget. Oh, well, that's the other day. Oh, ne okay, th another day. Okay. I'll follow up on that then. Thank you. you Thank you, Council. Any other questions for Mr. Farrell, Councilors? See, it's done. Okay, we're set with that one. Uh, Madam Clerk, the next one is? Veterans Council, David Farrell, Director. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. <coughs> now this budget is, uh, covers the uh, parade activities, um, essentially. You know, the two parades we operate, November 11th and uh, Memorial Day. Any questions, Mr. Cruz? Just a comment. You do a phenomenal job with $9,879 9, for, for two parades. Well, and, uh, I have to thank uh, Brockton High School for the most part. They provide, uh, you know, the JROTC and, of course, that wonderful band. It's just uh, fantastic to live in a city like this where you have uh, such resources available. Uh, and, and it's always tremendous having them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any other questions for Mr. Farrell? Seeing none, we're all set. Thank you. Thank Dave. you very much. Mr. Appreciate President. it. Thank you. Madam Clerk, our uh, last one for the evening. Animal Control, Thomas Tuchilla, Supervisor. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are Hope you? everyone's all right. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for <laughs> hanging in. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, I'd just like to open up and just say there's uh, basically the same budget as last year. Uh, two changes. There is a, uh, an increase um, in the overtime, and I also did request two full-time positions, a uh, kennel worker position and also a clerical position. Um, the mayor did go along with the uh, filling the kennel worker position uh, for a six-month period starting January 2016. And with that, uh, I'll take any questions anyone may have. Anyone have any questions for, uh, for Councillor Cruz? Thank you. Uh, actually, this just kind of came to mind because of some. Do you, are you getting more calls for different kind of animals, i.e., coyotes and deer? I, we do I, receive uh, a lot of wildlife calls. More than more than in past years. I think it's probably comparable to domestic down. animal type calls. Been here, so she, that's what because we, I, we up on the west side have noticed. I mean, the coyote population is, and they're much more brazen. And uh, I didn't know if many. Yeah, people we call have um, all different. All right. You know, deer calls. We're getting those almost all, um, every day. Fox calls, uh, raccoons, skunks. Possums, so the wild turkeys are everywhere now. Yeah. So we'll just leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Any other questions? For, sorry about that. Apologize. Any other questions? For, is Council like Sullivan. To, Tom, how are you tonight? Um, Good evening. Don't have any questions on your budget. It's just a few budget cycles ago uh, when we brought up the idea because of the. <laughs> Uh, the washer and dryer um, was needed because of all the blankets for the animals and stuff. It's got to be almost past its life. Does, do they need to be replaced soon, those washers and dryers over there? Um, we usually have to have the building department come down once a year. They have to clean it out. But other than that, it's still holding up. They're all doing right. okay? Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor. Any other questions, uh, Councillor, for uh, 
Mr. Chichilis, anything? Seeing none? We're all set. We appreciate it. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councilors. Have a good night. Thank you. Councilors, any other uh, questions in regards to tonight's uh, meeting? Good job. All set. Ready to convene? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll meet tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. right here again in the chamber. Mr. Chairman, are you bringing we'll the sandwiches tomorrow night? For tomorrow night? We'll, we'll, we're going to do it. Right? <laughs> 6.30. 30. tomorrow evening. 6.30 tomorrow night. That's it. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> Yeah. Right, but it's still with the 6:30 every night.